Mm, we are doing a Kickstarter, y'all. Hey! Hey! And we are excited to officially announce the Crooked Moon coming to Kickstarter in October. And <laughs> we will be playing um, through some of what will be coming in that Kickstarter project. Uh, from the time that we started uh, Legends of Avantress and decided that we wanted to stream, uh, one of the things that we always talked about was wanting to be able to play at the table with those of you out there watching. And by creating the supplement, it gave us the ability to bring our table into your house, into your home, and to you and your friends. TheCrookedMoon.com. It's on the screen there now. Go check it out. Uh, it gives a rundown of everything that we're talking about. And uh, every single person who becomes a VIP just means so much to us. So and thank they get you. something, thank you. don't they, for oh, becoming a VIP? They absolutely do, my friend. Oh. Do you want to tell us since you said Oh, no, no. <laughs> in fact, I believe they get an exclusive Chuckles Enamel pin. That's oh, right. Exactly. really? That's right, what else? Yeah. Um, probably I email. A whole, a whole mini extra expansion. A whole yeah. mini extra, a whole mini extra expansion that you get to navigate through Featuring uh, at your home table. The Honk Legion. Featuring the Honk Legion. It says Truly, in my Truly, I am become the Crooked Moon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Destroyer of goats. <laughs> this is a one shot for all intents and purposes uh, to give you an idea of what you could expect with the Crooked Moon supplement, the kind of adventure that you could run with your party. Roll that beautiful bean footage, right? Yes, beans. Somewhere lost in the shrouded realms of death lies a land of endless night where long forgotten horrors are revealed to those who travel through the mist. There, in a crooked house, lives a crooked man with a crooked grin who raises crooked arms to a crooked tree at the edge of midnight and hears the whispers of the old ones. They speak of a beast that stalks the darkest woods and darkest hearts, a crown of horns upon its head. If you lose your way and feel a warm breath that chills you to the bone, run. Follow the songs of harvest time and before long you'll find revelry in the dancing shadows of blazing wicker. No matter your story, these lonesome misty rails will deliver you to where the hallowed cannot save you. Now's the time to brave the dark wood, beware the wishing hour, and weave your own dreadful folktale underneath the crooked moon. The funny thing about narrators is that they're fully unreliable. We may like to wax eloquent about our favorite fables and folk tales in the waning hours of the day, but they're all lovely little eyes bathed in the pearly white shimmer of wistful reminiscence. The fact of the matter is that for every yarn you think you know by heart, there's a whole other side of that story so dark that it only lingers as the stuff of nightmare in the shrouded fringes of lunacy and imagination most twisted. Now you might catch yourself asking, and how did it really happen? Lucky for you, this story ain't over. So the long forgotten truth may reveal itself yet. You may even discover that the answer to that question is entirely up to you. Or maybe, just maybe, your wants and wishes are nothing but a whistle in the wind. All you need now is a little patience. Darkness surrounds you. Your minds drift in and out of dreams, both tantalizing and terrifying. For a time that feels simultaneously like an instant and an eternity. A sudden jolt stirs you from the slumber you cannot recall and as you return to the realm of the waking, you realize that there's much that you cannot remember. 
Your senses return and you realize that you're seated in a passenger car of some sort of train, rocking and swaying as it thunders forward to an unknown destination. You get your bearings and see that most of the seats are occupied by silent spirits, shimmering in a ghastly blue-green and only having the most vague humanoid shape. But then you realize you are not alone. Thankfully, your five companions, your five only friends in the darkness you rocket through, are scattered around the car, waking from restless sleep just like you. How you met these people and where you all came from, you have no idea. But what you do know is that there is a deep feeling of dread within the core of your being, punctuated by the lonesome wailing whistle of the distant locomotive that pulls you deeper into the gloom. The candlelight flickers in this train car. And as you look about and you take in the image of your friends around you all waking up from that dreamless sleep, try and get your bearings. How did you get here? What were you doing before this moment? Who are these strange humanoid figures that sit in this car with you and as you look out of this car and into the others in this section of the train they sit in almost complete stillness humanoid shapes very clearly but all in that ghastly greenish blue and none of them talking or moving or interacting in any way just the six of you gosh i've never get used to sleeping I could never, never understand why someone wouldn't have a biological need to do such a thing. Having a biology at all is, just sounds like the worst. Were we really sleeping? There were no dreams. Something about this is so very familiar, but I cannot remember. Does anyone remember what we were doing just moments ago before our slumber? I have no recollection of how we got here, but something about this train makes me feel uneasy. Did we get drugged again? I, I, I do not think so, no. Why do I feel like that happens a lot lately? <laughs> <laughs> something about this time is different. <clears throat> uh, I, I mean, uh, I don't even know why we're here or what we're doing. Well, let's retrace our steps. We seem to be on some sort of locomotive vehicular device, which means that we became fancy rich city folk in the interim of our slumber. And you look, you all look out the window as a mist um, drifts past the window. You stare out of it for a while, but you see no buildings. You see no other trains. You see no trees. All you see is a mist, almost like a shroud, as it just rushes past the train. I can't say where we're going. Something about this is just so familiar, but I cannot put my finger on it. This doesn't feel like a train that rich people would ride. Well, look at these other passengers. Nobody's responding. Nobody seems alert. Well, have you ever seen someone who is not rich city folk ever ride on a train? I actually or ever before? I've never ridden, no, correct. I've never ridden on a train before, so I just assumed that it wouldn't look like this. Is this what rich folk train look like? Well, I guess I've never seen them either. I just... Looking, I just assumed. Looking around the train, it does look like this kind of train that rich folk would ride. The seats are plush, the, uh, the wood is carved, uh, there is fanciful gilding, even the, even the lamp lights, or the, the lanterns that illuminate this place are, are intricate and beautiful, at least in this train car. Um, and whether it's for the truly wealthy or at least the well-off, this, this train is a beautiful piece of, of creation. Yorgrim, my friend, are you able to communicate with these spirits? 
Well, let me try. Hello, you there. Spirit, I'm riding on the... Tr um, you, Yorgrim, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought you were going to have some sort of a, 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 a ritual, or perhaps some sort of, of, of special, spectral... I don't know. I mean, they're just sitting right there. No, I mean, man, I don't have to summon them. I don't think they're sitting in the seats. I don't know. Looks like they have tickets and everything. What, what about your train? lantern? Doesn't yeah. it have some connection to the other world? Yorgrim, as you speak to one of these entities, it turns its head and looks towards you. But it doesn't look at you. It looks through you. And out the window, into the shrouded fog that rushes past. I don't think it can even see you. Feels like it's looking through me. It's not responding. I I don't get. It, it, do I get the same? I mean, it's it's obviously a it's a, tr it's tr a spirit. It just doesn't register me. Do I get any? It kind doesn't. Of... It doesn't seem to pay any attention to you at all as you attempt to speak to it. Is anyone else getting the heebie-jeebies? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't until you mentioned it. Now you got a feeling it, right? Well, uh, how could someone ignore such a charismatic hello? How do you do? Dripping with charisma. Normally, all I have to say is hello, spirits. Speak to me. And then they respond, but they just stare right through me. There's something unright about this place. Perhaps we aren't on the same plane as they are. Perhaps there's some barrier or disconnect. This is a train, Mary. It's not a plane. Just, uh, just so we're on the same page. I want to make sure you understand the difference. Uh, pla <laughs> planes are, 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 are places of existence. Well, but we're on the same train, so I mean, I feel like train is sort of lower down in the funnel of like existence, right? I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but that's sort of how I was thinking about it. It's at this moment that every single one of these heads, or one of the heads of these of these entities, all turns and looks into your train car. But not at you, through you, and out into the fog that rushes past. Ooh. What are they looking at? Something must be out there. Do you see anything? And I'll look out where they're looking. You look out and you see no silhouettes, no movement, nothing at first. But then as you continue to stare into the fog, you begin to see what appears to be the, the outline of faces. And as you press yourself up against the glass to try and get a better look, you see that interspersed in this dense fog are hundreds of wailing faces rushing past. I was just waiting for you to jump scare me so bad. It's coming, it's coming. The night yeah. is young. Yeah. Well, well, oh, Farron, what do you see? I have, I have tough, on account of not having eyes, I can't, I can't really see. Can you look real close against that window? <laughs> surely, surely nothing will jump at you. Fair and good. Bills and good. <laughs> yes, make sure you press your face directly up against the glass. Oh, you, oh your antlers might get in the way. Uh, oh, Yorgrim, oh, your tombstone might get in the way. Lethica, oh, you have a mask. Brizzy, oh, you have a snap. Marius. <laughs> All right, Jericho, I'll handle it. And uh, Marius will walk up, as, like, try not to disturb the other passengers, try to find a, a, an aisle where uh, Marius can put his face directly up against the window and try to you, get a better look. You squeeze between the legs of your friends. as you, You're in a compartment, mm. and it's two um, seats, one on either side. And uh, though you're all crowded in here, there are a couple of these um, these humanoid figures in this compartment with you. Um, but you make your way um, between, uh, between the seats and press your face up against the glass, and it feels cold to the touch as your fingers... Um, oh, even to me? Even to you. As oh, your fingers man. press up yeah, against the glass, you see little bits of frost appear on the window outside as if the temperature outside is significantly colder than the temperature on the inside of this Darius. compartment 
and you you stare out and you do see what Farron is talking about, these ghostly face faces wailing in the darkness. And they float past. Do you see them, Marius? Yes, we are very clearly in some sort of realm of death. I've seen faces like that before and they weren't happy. They weren't they weren't alone. They weren't around for very long. I'm listening to all of this, and uh, I'm going to start checking my person for a ticket to see if I can find Ooh, an item crappy. or any additional evidence Ooh, or clues uh, that might be on my person, and also uh, to see if I still have the things that I remember having on me the last time I had a memory. What was what was the last memory you had about the things that you had on you? Uh, I would have my mask on. I would have a bag that I cannot remove. I would have mm. a, a chakram at my side, a weapon. I would have perhaps you, a small You remember purse. maybe having a pouch, but nothing about a bag on your side you couldn't remove. Your oh. mask is firmly in place, but you might have had you might have had a satchel or um, some kind of um, small backpack or something of the like where you would keep your things. Um, maybe some religious effigies, incense, mm -hmm. a couple of candles, some trinkets here and there. But um, aside from that, you, you think and you feel like there are things that you should remember, but wherever those memories reside, they, they're shrouded. And you feel yourself and all the things that you should have are there. There is nothing additional. There are no tickets. There's no itinerary. There's no letter or note explaining why you would be here. Hmm. I'm just gonna continue to listen as I think about the relationship I have with memory. Marius, if it's like you say and this train is taking us through the lands of death, our destination can't be anywhere that's good for us. We should get to whatever pilots this creation and see where we're going. You're right. I thank Lathander. At the very least, we are together. I know I can rely on all of you. And we will be all right. I'd be mighty afeard if I was trapped alone with all these spooky ghosts. <laughs> They're also quite rude. <laughs> huh. But I'm so glad I have friends for the first, well, not the first time ever. I'm not needy or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just stick close to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't leave if you tell me to. I will, I mean. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Jericho, it's all right. No one's going to ask you to leave. We need you. We all need each other. Okay, how are we gonna go? Probably a very friendly conductor. Wearing nice overalls or suspenders, perhaps? Yes. Gorgon's right. We have to find whoever's mm -hmm. at the head of this train. Surely there's some sort of Engine room? Helm? Is there some kind of uniform that they wear? Uh, I only saw it in pictures and... He sounds like an usher, right, you know. At a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> Briggsy! <Wait, laughs> movie theaters! <laughs> Get your head on your head! Briggsy! Briggsy! What, what the, the fuck? Yeah. Today, what sorry. the fuck are you talking we about? We didn't have those in my clan. <laughs> nor did we have books. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I guess if, you know, I'm sure somebody's driving this thing, uh, you know, uh, presuming it's not like a ship. Uh, do I, I guess I wouldn't see the rails that were on, right? Like I wouldn't. Looking outside, you, all you see is the shroud of fog and the wailing faces. Do, do we get a sense of forward momentum? It does feel like you're propelling forward. So we can kind of presume which direction we're headed. Like, not, not like north, but like, oh, it's this way or it's this way, right? Like, we can feel the G forces you, you, on Yes, body. you can mm, feel the mm. force on your oh. body. You can feel the train shaking. You imagine that there must be some sort of track that you're on because you can feel the wheels as they move across some sort of track and it shakes the train and uh, knocks things this way and that. You can hear the clink of the glass as it shakes. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can get to the front of the train. And let us all try to stay in the same car at the same time. We should not be separated. I hate to say this, this is a train, no, not a car. Just so we're on the same page. <laughs> First planes and trains and automobiles? This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. I mean, they're not crazy yeah. feels. This feels like we're just speaking different language. Anyway, lead the way. I'm gonna follow. I'll walk towards uh, like the connector of the car and try the presumably door handle. I'll be right you, next to Farron. You all make your way um, out of the train car, the cabin that you're in, and into the long hallway that runs the length of this train car. And you look this way and that until, just feeling the momentum of the train, you um, you get a, a good idea of which way you would imagine the engine of this train would be. And you head in that direction, taking a, a quick right and heading towards what you believe to be the front of the train. You get to the door, Farron, and there is a handle there for you to turn and enter the new carriage, but you notice that all you see is darkness in front of you. The window that's on on this door, it clearly leads to somewhere, but you can't see what could be beyond this door. And yet, you continue forward. Soon, as you open the door to the next car, your senses are overwhelmed with garish light, gaudy color, pungent fragrance, and brassy jazz music that is far too loud and far too upbeat for a ghost train. In that moment of shock, you realize you're standing firmly within the next car and the door has slammed behind you. Before you seems to be a luxurious dining car with plush upholstery, pristinely pressed tablecloths, and even ornate pieces of art fastened to portions of the wall in between the windows to the gloom beyond. There's an unnaturally long bar along the left side of the car with every kind of alcohol you could possibly imagine, and many you never knew to exist. Sitting at this bar in this space is this space's lone passenger. A tall, thin human man with slicked back black hair and a pencil-thin mustache. He is dressed in an almost too fine gray suit with pinstripes. And on the bar is a polished cane with a silver goat skull as its topper. Once he notices you, he turns from his glass of amber spirits and gestures widely to you. You're finally awake! I thought you were going to snooze the whole trip. Maybe even join your fellow passengers back there in death so you could get reborn for a second chance at life in a brand new fetching and functional form. Seems you want to keep your dusty old bodies. Your loss. I'm just yanking your chain. Come over here, sleepyheads, and perk up with a cocktail. It's what I do to get ready first thing every early dusk. I'll elbow <clears throat> your grim, and I'll say, See, look what I said about rich folk. You is, fight it. They, they, they ride on trains. This is more how I imagined it. With the music and the guy and... <laughs> is that... Bacon? Did he just imply that we were dead? Yes, that's... What I seem to take from it. That's correct. That... Seems like the most likely explanation for what has happened to us, given the state of our minds and... The other spirits in this place. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that would certainly be a first for me, given what we all know. Yes. Well, so sorry for being rude. We're just surprised to just be on on a ghost train and be with a bunch of spooky ghosts and then seeing a non-ghost in such a fine-looking compartment uh, such as this with such fine bottles. Anyway, anyway, uh, uh, how to do? Um, my name is uh, O Jericho Stiggs, but you can call me Jericho. Uh, most folk do. I stumble forward. I try to take <laughs> off my hat. Uh, I'm very nervous. If a scarecrow c could sweat, uh, I would be uh, being around someone I perceive to be very rich. Jericho is right. Uh, we're, we're, we apologize for our rudeness. Uh, my name is Sir Marius Renathia. Pleasure to meet you. He reaches out his hand and he shakes it. It's a pleasure to meet you too. It's good to see that you're all alive and well. well I'd introduce myself, but it seems you know us already. He looks at you a bit and he... No, I don't think I've ever seen you a day in my life. But at least you're alive, at least you're awake. Unlike the rest of these folks up in, up on this train. Now it's just uh, curious what folks like you are doing on a train like this. Do you have any answers for us? Oh, 
he looks at you and he reaches out towards your mask. You do look a bit familiar. Have we met before? Do, ah. I, do I feel familiarity? Mm. With, with... Mm, roll in. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. The first Ooh. one. Ooh. The first roll of the oh, crooked moon. I'll, the first I'll say roll. I'll do insight. Just. Oh. Okay. I think that I think one. that I think that will work. It rolled a three earlier. Let's see. <laughs> let's see how that goes. I think well, we have uh, insight. Voting. Insight. I think I will accept uh, one of your 25s, please. Hmm. Wow. You you look at him, and for a moment, you feel a sense of familiarity, but it is fleeting. As you take in the lines of his face, he is a very handsome man, and it's possible that you could have seen a man that looks similar to this in your many years of travel. Um, though that feeling of familiarity stays in your stomach. You can re- you can uh, recollect no memories with this particular person. And as he as his hand lingers by your mask, hmm, it's quite interesting. Quite interesting. Yes, it is. Tell me, what is the last thing that you remember? Are, have you always been a bartender here in this train car? <laughs> oh. Oh, little lady, I'm not a bartender at all. I'm frequenting this train because I'm traveling. He's not behind the bar? He's no, he's in front of the bar my drinking. My apologies, my apologies. Oh. Now, if you'd, like, if you'd like a drink, I'd love to share a drink with all of you. One of our finest whiskeys, some scotch, rye. I'll, ha- I'll, I'll have some, please. Make it two. I'll take one Pick as your well. poison. A fine whiskey sounds lovely, please. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Whiskey, what? whiskey, whiskey. Uh, 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 s- sarsaparilla, is that whiskey? <laughs> oh, Can be today. <laughs> could, could you just, just a tall, cool bottle of sarsaparilla would just oh, do me a rat fine. He snaps his fingers and you watch as some of the bottles begin to shake and they begin to rise up off of the counter or off of the shelf. And um, you watch as um, glasses rise up from behind the bar and one Uh, in front of each of you is laid down as these bottles float forward and begin to pour. All the while you see he's moving his hand as he's controlling this one and this one and this one, pouring that one, adding a slice of a lime or um, some salt to the rim or whatever touch to the alcohol of your dreams or in Jericho's case, a sarsaparilla, a nice cool sarsaparilla (laughs) on the rocks. I I turn down the whiskey and uh, ask for a mixed drink, the last word. And he uh, he smiles at you and gets to work Thank on you. this drink, seemingly understanding what your requests are without having to ask for instructions. Mm. And it takes no time at all for you all to be sitting here at the bar with this new person, all enjoying a drink. Well, it's been very rude of me to provide you with drinks and not tell you anything about myself. I'm Philip, I am Philip Drustenwald, and you, uh, you, my friends, are making your way to my lands. Oh, so you're saying that, uh, you're a landowner, huh? Hmm. I see that glint in your eye. You're a business, businessman at heart, aren't you? Uh, I've been called that by a crocodile or two. Ooh, and a, and a scarecrow, for, for extra measure. He is quite shrewd, I believe is the term. Is something wrong with your eye? <laughs> oh, do you, do you mean this filthy sack that's got <laughs> holes poked into it? <laughs> Leading to strange orangey soul stuff? On, on a, a, perhaps a fiendish construction on account of the old crow demon, what lives in- <gasps> Wait, Virgil! Virgil, am I really free of Virgil? (laughs) You are not. (laughs) Oh, wait. Oh, I'm free of... (laughs) (laughs) And my my head will snap back up and you'll hear... (gasps) 
and suddenly my mouth will open and there's a burst of black feathers as a horrible uh, demonic looking crow just shoots out and flaps and starts pecking me on the head. Oh no, I wasn't being wishful thinking, Virgil. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're best chums like you always said. You're the only friend I'll ever have and no one else will ever love me like you. Ah, ah okay, okay, it's okay, Virgil. <laughs> Oh, I got feathers all in my sarsaparilla. <laughs> oh, and now I've brought down the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you allow animals on the train? I could just take care of it and I'll pull out my flip mark. I don't think you could take care of it if you tried. Are you looking at that thing? No, no, not your friend Jericho. The thing on his shoulder. Oh, I mean, it looks kind of spooky, but I've shot birds, crows, seagulls, albatross. Trosses. Oh, I will try. What's the plural? I, b I believe albatry. Al albatry. Right. Uh, now that I look at you all a little bit closer, you've been here before, haven't you? Well, we certainly get the feeling that we do, but we just can't quite put our fingers but on I it. But I feel like that's a completely different story than the one we're in right now. Now, that's a different telling, though some things seem to be familiar. What? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well doesn't matter all that much, but I can tell at least one thing. You haven't been to Wickamore Hollow. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Is that where we're headed? Well, the train's passing through there, that's for sure. Wickamore Hollow's been having troubles. People going missing, crops failing, beasts that stalk the woods, that sort of thing. And you look like you've uh, gotten your hands dirty a fair share of times. Are you saying there's trouble? Trouble right here with a hollow? It's literally what I just said. It's trouble starts with T in it. Anyway, I thought just with your voice you'd go break into some kind of song if I just feed you up, never mind. I do like to sing on occasion, but I haven't had I haven't had enough scotch for me to be doing performance for you this evening. And do, he do all drinks rich folks back a sing bit. and dance? I mean, with tapping shoes? In the major illusions, they do. You can't be married to my wife and not know how to dance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got a wife? <laughs> of course I've got a wife. And he, he, uh, he lifts up his hand that he's been holding his scotch, and you see that there's a, there's a large golden wedding band there on his finger. Oh, lucky. We're heading into the realms of death with, with beasts that haunt the woods, and you worried about the fact that he's married? Ah, well, I mean, the 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 horrible woods of death would sure be a lot warmer with the best gal. Well, uh, I suppose that's true. Well, thank you. <laughs> Maybe she has a sister for you. Ooh. Does she have a sister for me? I hate to break it to you, but no. Oh. There's only... My sweet Adela is one of a kind. Well, that's congratulations on your new betrothal. He, he looks at you, seems a little bit confused, but he waves it along. Yes, we're heading towards Wickamore Hollow, and I think that you could do a little bit of good there. Maybe, maybe not. Is this Wickamore Hollow also filled with spirits and... Uh mists like this. Oh, the entire place of Druskenvald is filled with spirits and mist. Hmm. Well, perhaps we'll have some more spirits before we have to deal with those spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great idea to me. Cheers. 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 Oh, Cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Briggsy, that's a, that's a party flag, Briggsy. You're out. I I'm out of here. I got a crucifix, star. He, he snaps and immediately refills your drink. Well, oh. well cheers to new friends and potentially the saviors, saviors of Wickamore Hollow. And a brief Either way, moment of respite. I've got things that I have to do and shopping to take my wife to, so hopefully you can mend it so I don't have to think twice about it. Well, I... All, all right, then. I suppose we'll drink to that. All right. Uh, we, cheers. Should we say some words? A toast? Oh, go on. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, we're going on the rails on a spooky train. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> that's, that's, that's I didn't expect to be on the spot. I put myself on the spot. <laughs> oh, cheers, Cheers. 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 You got a great voice on you, Jericho. 
Oh, well, thank you very kindly. I think my wife would love to hear you sing. Speaking of my wife, she is the most beautiful, smart, mystical, intelligent, amazing, hottest woman you could possibly imagine. And she's in the one car over. Huh? (laughs) She's not for you, good sir. She's for me. (laughs) She's been in there relining her energy all night. And you know what I think? I think she'd like to meet you. Huh? And if... I'm going to need you to calm down. <laughs> very whiplash. I need, you to, I need you to wait and rein it in. The yogurt is also cursed. <laughs> you wanted some yogurt? Uh, no, I'm fine with my last word. Thank you. Nah, no problem. Anything for you. Now, you see, Adela's a mystical woman. And if you're going to be heading into Wickamore Hollow, she might be able to help you out a bit. See if she can commune with the spirits and the world around her or something. Give you some, some help along the way. That sounds good. I think we could use that. Is she some sort of like cleric or wizard or something? She's Adela. What more is there to say? Fair enough. I don't know. Is she like clearing her energy or is she like clearing her energy? You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. Uh, well, I don't know what you mean either. I guess we'll find out in about three seconds. <laughs> Wait, can she tell us our future? One of the greatest things about Adela, and let me tell you, there are many great things about Adela. She has the sight beyond sight. Well, that sounds useful. Ooh. Perhaps we can get some clarity on why we're here and what happened before. Well, if you're interested in meeting her, I'll let her know you're here. That would be lovely. Yes, please. Please. Uh, you watch as he picks up, uh, as he lifts his hand, the same one that he had been using to hold his glass of, of liquor, and you see a, um, you see a cuff link on, on his wrist, shaped like, uh, in similar fashion to the, uh, the goat skull on the head of his cane, and, um, he puts it up towards his mouth. Adela, sweetie, there are some people in the, in the bar car, if you're interested in meeting them. I think they could use some of your mysticism and just some of your boundless energy. Love you, sweet pea. See you soon. I'm sure she'll be here in a minute. Your wife is a ring? We have a way of communicating with each other across many planes of... It's a magical item, friend. I'm sure you've got some of your own, like your your little crow fella there. Well, well, that's one way to describe Virgil. He's my worst friend. I mean, he's my very best friend. <laughs> I'm getting packed violently. I'm not sure how long it's going to take her for her to clear her energy. So until then, just enjoy the spirits. And if you have any questions, feel free to throw them my way. Ooh. I'm sorry. I feel like we need to start over. It just got off to an awkward start. and I You pining want- after my wife? No, I'm not pine. I'm just jealous of what you have. <laughs> not, not with her particularly. I just never had a best gal of my own. What about these two beautiful gals standing next to you? Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm like covered in mud and kind of smell. <laughs> Some heavy moss. <laughs> Something's crawling around in my hair. <laughs> We're all just best companions. None of us are best anything besides best friends. Well, well, anyways, where are these ghosts coming from, and where are they going? Well, all of these ghosts, as you call them, spirits, they are on their way to Druskenvald, where they'll be reborn into their new forms. I apologize. Some of them even look like you, scarecrows. Mm-hmm. Gosh, scarecrows? We've got skeletons, imps, rat folk, beetle folk, harpies, lichens, you ghouls. Have, you have zombies? We don't have any zombies. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> I, I I apologize if you've mentioned this already, but do you own this train? Nobody owns this train. Nobody that I know. You mentioned that we were heading to your lands. Do you own this Wickermore Hollow? I own all of Druskenvold. It's in the name, Philip Druskenvold, at your service. Oh. Hello? Hi! Who is it? Oh my god, look at 
damn, there's so many of them in here. Look at you, you got bark all over you and moss and all kinds of things. This is wild, Philip. Look at them, they're darling, honey. You see, bouncing into this train car from one train over is a petite woman with um, beautiful brown hair that is short and almost plastered in uh, to her head and these cute little finger curls. She has a long necklace down the front of her uh, form-fitting outfit that is covered in beads that sways with the movement of her hips. Uh, the necklace um, is long and at the very end you see that it has um, some sort of what almost looks like the planchette on a spirit board um, but is clearly an, uh, a detailed and elaborate piece of jewelry uh, and you see that she picks it up and she holds it to her eye and she looks at each of you and lets out a, a, a cute little gasp as she inspects each of you individually. Um, she bounces up to you, the beads swaying with every bit of movement um, as she um, unabashedly uh, walks up to you and shakes your hand and uh, plays it with a little bit of your moss and pokes at your stomach, Jericho. Um, each of you, she, she, it is very clear she has, she has no shame and no sense of personal space uh, as she bounds around and you glance to oh. Philip, who is staring at her with all of the love in the world. It is as if everything that is important is bundled into this one tiny package of a woman as she just um, bounces here and there and giggles and squeals uh, before she finally jumps on to the stool next to Philip, spins around on it three times, kicking her feet up in the air before she crosses one leg over the other. This is gonna be so great getting to know you. I'm Adela Druskin Bald. I'm Philip's wife. It is a pleasure. Yes, second. Oh, absolutely. There has not been anyone alive on this train and well, except for us, right, Philip? And she elbows him to the uh, in the side, and he he looks down at her and puts one hand on her shoulder. Anything you say, honey. Anything you say. And he uh, drops a soft kiss on her forehead um, before continuing to let her Wait, speak. So you say we are still alive? Well, I guess from a certain point of view. Well, I sure <laughs> hope so. You're not looking like one of them chaps in one of the other train cars. You took the thought right out of my mouth. I mean, if you want to be dead, I guess you could try to be. What do you think you'd be reborn as in Druskin Bald? Well, you're already a scarecrow, so I guess you've got that one covered. <sighs> hmm, let me see if I could guess. Scarecrow, you would be a haunted tree folk for sure. You, I don't know, maybe like some kind of living toy? Like a doll or something? I could see that. That would be oh, interesting, would don't you be think? So I could see that. Too. Like a, por like a yeah. porcelain little baby doll. That's, yeah, I can see that. You. Hmm. Oh, You're oh. very large. Well, thank you. You would be a trollkin. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you would be a trollkin. You would probably be a rat folk. I mean, sure, it's the closest thing I'm gonna get to an alligator, so. You mean he, me or him? No, you! <laughs> oh, me! The one with the chunk! Oh, I, I guess. No, this one here? Brooding, blonde, blue eyed. Well, no, blue eyed once, huh? Yes. Interesting. Yes. I think you'd be an imp. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see that. Surprising no one. <laughs> I assumed you were going to say also a toy, but I can see imp, yes. Some no, definitely are, an imp. Some of us are in a state of in-between, currently. Oh, that's ominous. Yeah. So you'll be with us someday then? Like for real, for real? I almost hope so. It depends on the nature of our curse and how we were cursed and really the, the, the dark power that holds claim over our souls. It's very complicated. We all walk in the mists eventually, Briggsy. There's no way to avoid it. Oh, wow. Wow, you were all so mysterious and interesting. Yogi, but... that was a badass thing to say. <laughs> uh, I, I, oh, my God. I, I got chills. I don't know I can still get those. Uh, well, I mean, I guess most of the folk are in between. I'm, I'm kind of more of a never at all. <laughs> So how are you feeling about going into Wickamore Hollow? We're hoping to find some answers. It's so nice of you guys to offer to go ahead and do that so Philip and I can go shopping. We were really tired of pretending to care about what was happening over there. <laughs> oh, I suppose we're... I mean, we do care. You know, but... 
Oh, you, you... I need a new dress. We're gonna have a party soon. It's it's it is no it's no problem. It's, it's one of the tenants. We always aid when we can. Well, I mean, is there some kind of reward or something? Or oh, as Jericho would say, genuine reward. Oh, I, I, that's my line. <laughs> <laughs> no, no reward or anything. But isn't that why you're here? Why else would would six living folk be on this train? Heading into Druskenbold, passing directly through Wickenmore Hollow when there were problems going on down there. To be honest with you, we we have no memory. The last oh, thing Oh, that's I, scary. You must be horrified about that. The last thing that I can remember is having some sort of purpose or, or quest for my king. Beyond that, nothing. <sighs> Does anything ring true about when she says, Well that that's why we're here? Roll an insight mm. check. It's time for another roll. <laughs> oh, roll That's a two. proper caper. Oh. Hot damn. <laughs> it's above average. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, well, shucks. We take those. Uh, what was it? What did you say? I forget. Insight. Oh, in oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's a 15. <laughs> Good gods. Briggsy has no. Um, you're you're listening to the things that she's saying, and you have no memory of why you're here, where you were before you fell asleep, what you had been doing weeks leading up to that. You know who you are, what's on your person, who these people are around you, but how you met them, you don't remember. The adventures you could have possibly gone on, you don't remember. But what she's saying sounds logical. If you hmm. woke up on this train as the only living people in whatever this place may possibly be. And the only two other apparently living people are telling you that there was trouble here. You feel like that is at least a better guess than any you could come up with on your own. Well, yeah. fair enough. Well, I mean, I'm sure you care very deeply about your subjects on account of being your own land, but shopping... Oh, yeah, for sure. It, I mean, it, it's it's a very important thing. A, a, a political leader needs to be looking stylish, or else how are they going to wield power uh, reasonably at all? You think anyone's going to listen to you if you don't look absolutely adorable or dapper? It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I look gross and downtrodden and no one listens to what I have to oh, say. Oh, honey, don't. She walks over to you and she, she grabs one of your hands. Oh, honey, don't say that about yourself. You got a lot more value than you think. I'm listening to you right now. Lloyd, be careful with that. <laughs> oh, does he give you splinters? He wears a handsome you could hat. call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. What? I splint as one in college. <laughs> <laughs> what? I did not think that you went to college. <laughs> well, <laughs> college. Any, anyway, honey, I'm just saying, don't put yourself down, all right? <laughs> oh, it's okay. The words will come to you when you're ready. She she drops your hand very quickly and bounces back over to her stool and sits down. So what any of you scared? I can't imagine waking up somewhere far from home, not knowing where I was or what I'd been doing. And I mean, I hope that just like you, I'd have Philip on my side, cause he'd make me feel very comfortable. But if I didn't have him, I'd be horrified. It's not so bad. I actually have been through this experience once before, so I feel <laughs> quite comfortable. We may not have the syntax of our former lives, but we are united and we can accomplish anything if we stick together. Lethica's right. We have purpose. There's good we can do here, and that is enough. Mm. Oh, well, that's great. I'm glad to hear it. Anytime I get nervous about stuff, I like to do a tarot card reading to kind of help myself get some guidance. I could do one for you, but I mean, if you're not scared at all and you think that you're going to be just fine, I guess what's the need, right? I would be happy to take a reading. Oh, you would! I would love that so much! We should go find a table, we'll sit down around it. I can turn the lights down a little bit, we'll make it a bit spooky. Because you got to make sure that the ambiance is all set, you know what I mean? And then I'll stop pulling the cards. I bet they'll be really good cards. I'm sure there won't be anything weird about them. Of course there wouldn't, because you're here for, for a reason. You're just going into, oh, it's going to be great. You want to do that? You want to? I can show you a place to go. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Before we get started, is this some sort of hidden fee or something? You're going to try to, like, upcharge us? Upsell us on something after you do the reading. Well, uh, that's just rude. Look at me. Of course, I don't need your money. Uh, I just wanted damn. to do it for fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there's other kinds of currencies besides uh, money. Like what? 
Give are you trying mind. to offer me sexual favors no, no, in front of no, my no, husband? No, what? what? Philip, oh, are you, you see, That's what I was talking about. He, you you see that Philip uh, holds on to the um, to the goat skull on his cane, and you, for the first time, you see a flicker of anger across his face as he looks towards you. Oh, God. Are you trying to proposition my wife? No, no. I, I, the whole point is, as a... My wife is trying to offer you a, a really... A kind thing, I think. Um, a tarot reading to see where your futures may lie in this place. Please, excuse my friend. He did not mean to overstep. He does it often, and he doesn't know what he is doing, or how to think, or act. In I just wasn't in blind company. weird sex stuff. Look, that's all I'm saying. I mean, it's not like I haven't done it. I mean, like, say, oh, I can see the future. Look at all these tricks I can do. That'll be you for a thousand Are you implying that my wife is a liar? No. I'm and she would try and pull a ruse over your eyes? As a fellow m member of the occult, or whatever you call it here. <laughs> I just wanted to marry him well sometimes. Please, please just apologize to the comments. I'm sorry. I'm, you know what? I can admit when I'm wrong. I can admit and I can be the bigger crocodile zombie person. So I apologize. Please excuse my friend. Captain. Miss Philip Druskin. And Miss, what was your name? Adel, Adel, Adela. 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 She, she kind of tilts her head down and looks sad. It's Adela Druskin Vault. You're so gracious, Captain. Um, <laughs> did you say I'm you, sorry, Adela. Did you say you were sorry? I did, I did say I was oh, sorry. Oh, good. I'm so glad you did. Philip, can I do the tarot <laughs> reading for... Um... <laughs> if that's what you want to do, honey, that's what you got to do. You know I'm going to support anything you want. I know you're, honey. It's one of the things I love about you the most. And she gets up on her tippy toes and she goes to place a smooch on his on his cheek, but she is far too short. So he reaches down, puts his arms around her waist, picks her up so that she can kiss him on the cheek. Uh, he ruffles a, her hair a little bit. Oh, don't you mess up the do, honey. I'm about to do a tarot reading. Uh, he... Um, he squeezes her tightly a little bit as he places her down on the ground and she motions towards you um, to follow her. There's a table right here in the corner. Let's go ahead and get set up. Grab your drinks. Come on. I can't think of a more appropriate place than uh, Realm of the Dead for a reading. Uh, Miss Farron, I know you're probably very afeard. So maybe we should ask uh, Miss Adela for some reassurance. This will just confirm our heroic fate. <laughs> Are you asking me to ask on your behalf? Oh, I just, I, I see that you're a little <laughs> nervous and a little afeard. I mean, I'm not afeard. Right. But I can see, I just thought, you know, maybe we'd want to do it, you know. You know, now that you mention it, I, I am feeling a little bit afraid. And oh, I, I could tell, I know. For I, reassurance, I, I think maybe I'd, yeah, I think we'd better ask. Oh, her. that's good to do that for yourself. Yeah, thank you. Thank just you. for myself. Yeah, good. I'm looking that's out for right. you. Yeah, exactly right. What, what did I want to ask her again? <laughs> oh, that everything's gonna be okay and it's gonna be confirmation of our heroic fate and everything's gonna be real fine in Wicker Moor Hollow. I am uh, <coughs> feeling a bit afraid, you see, and uh... Oh, honey, don't be afraid. You're so beautiful. I... There's no need to be afraid when you're you're beautiful. That, you're beautiful. No, I'm talking I mean, to I'm you. Beautiful. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I really want to know is... <laughs> <laughs> the glow in my eyes and mouth actually <laughs> dull. <laughs> it's just that me smash. You're the best. It's, it's I'm a very sorry. dim glow. It's like I'm you sorry. have a third lung that just <laughs> allows No, no, that's the problem. He needs a third lung. Yeah. No, it's been ripped out of me. If, if a crow can oh. laugh, Virgil laughs, and he comes over to attempt to like give you like a high five to your like horn to your <laughs> <animal. Man. laughs> Got him. <laughs> he takes his talon and he's like doing this. <laughs> uh. I think we just really want to know that everything's gonna be all right. That we are meant to be here and oh, helping and in the town. That's why I want to do the tarot the reading for you, because it's gonna go ahead and tell you what to expect in your future. I'm sure everything will be fine. Look at you. You're all strong and healthy and alive. I mean, you've already got so many things going for you that so many others don't. From a certain point of view. It's very kind of you to put our minds at ease. Oh, I'd love that? to. Reading the tarot Ooh. is one of my favorite things. I'm into all sorts of mysticism. I can do the spirit board in the tarot. I can roll bones. I can do all kinds of stuff. 
Whose bones do you be rolling? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and this ritual you have will no way uh, curse our souls. Oh, no, of course not. Why would I ever curse your soul? I don't know. You never see it coming. It's just the chieftains with their rituals. And then suddenly everybody's gone. That's such a sad story. <clears throat> anyway, oh. so we're going to do a tarot card reading, oh. yeah? <laughs> Please, we would love right. that. Thank Let's you. head on over to the fine. table. And immediately you feel the lights begin to dim. She um, takes you over to a circular table in one of the corners of this train car. And the um, uh, the lights dim and begin to, to flicker a little bit. As you look over um, towards Philip um, and you realize that you are the only people in this train car. Philip is gone. And so, with him, is the sound of jazz. As all of a sudden, the ambiance in this trailer changes. And Adela sits down in front of you. And that perky energy that she had before, she somehow finds a way to rein in as she pulls out a deck of ornate cards, a silver gilding around the edges. Um, as she looks down at them and closes her eyes and she begins to hum along to the song that plays in this car, but from where you have no idea. She breathes in and out as she thinks for a while and you begin to hear her muttering things. What could their fate possibly be? What are they doing here? Where does this all end? Do they come here for a reason? Is the future looking bright? And she begins to ask all of these questions and you begin to notice that as she takes this deck of cards in her hand, she begins to shuffle through them with one hand um, very tactfully um, as she reaches out with the other and occasionally places her hand on some point of your body, almost as if she's channeling a bit of your energy um, before, um, after touching each of you individually, she begins to shuffle the deck and then takes about two to three minutes of almost silence while she, sh while she shuffles the deck in front of you. And then with her eyes still closed, she places down one card, the fool. Oh gosh, the fool. This isn't so bad, actually. I was just kind of hoping for a little bit of a, a little bit of intrigue. No, the fool's the fool's quite interesting. It means you're on a journey, so I guess that does mean that you were supposed to be here. You were. You're on a new journey. You're stepping out. You. It's a long journey, I think. It's clear she holds the card up in her hands. It's clear you were bound for Wickamore Hollow in a brand new life, starting over, leaving the life you knew behind for something new and different. Maybe not on your own accord, but because that's what's meant to be. That's what's supposed to be. This is a good card. Everyone likes a, a new journey, right? An adventure and travel. And that's exactly where you found yourself. Uh, it, it, well, it's technically correct. And it was upright, so that's nice. The tower, upright. Oh. It's another upright card. Interesting. So, the tower is kind of hit and miss. And in this case, she feels it, and you see that her eyes almost gloss over and become a little misty, almost as if she's reading more into the cards than just their interpretation, but seeing, like Philip said, beyond the veil, seeing in a way that other people can't see. You're bound for sudden imminent change, chaotic and maybe even violent. Uh -huh. There's a villain. Not just one, but six. What? Six villains. Huh. These the beasts that your husband was speaking of. It 
could be. There were people going missing and there were beasts in, in the crops of Phelan. Maybe that's on account of six different villains. And, and the sudden change. Maybe you're the ones that are going to bring it. Change for the good, I hope. Right? And you watch as her eyes gloss over just a little bit more. And she, when she comes to, she looks a little more detached. Change for the good, I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that was the tower upright. One for each of us. We'll, we'll take them on. Yeah. Six. It's a fair fight. Is probably what that card means. <clears throat> of course. Well, we'll do the last one, and this is, I'm sure, going to tell us that everything's going to be exactly as it should be, and that's the devil upright. Oh, don't let the fact it's called the devil scare you. It can have a lot of different meanings. Let me just take some time to to commune with this card and feel it. Huh. There's a temptation here. There's a lot of temptation from all of you. There's going to be something that's going to be hard for each of you individually to overcome. No, oh, no. The devil with his horns and his wings. Your journey is one of sin, evil, and villainy. But I'm sure you're here to fix that, right? Of course. It's not like you're gonna be the problem. You're here to fix the problem, not become it. I'm going to get myself another drink. I'll be right back. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, so we got the fool. You're on a journey. Um, new things, new life. You got the tower, the sudden imminent change. It's chaotic and possibly violent, but that's you fighting the bad things and, and the temptation, but you'll surely overcome it. Yeah. I'm sure you'll overcome it. You speak of temptation. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't speak a temptation. The cards speak a temptation. Of, of course. And no one is perfect. We all have made mistakes well, in our lives. I don't know. I think Philip is pretty perfect. <laughs> the point is, we learn from those mistakes and we don't make them twice. Mm. So temptation will not be an issue for us. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You know, for some folks... Temptation is no problem, but, you know, I've been faced with temptation quite a few times in my life, and I've generally lost most of the time. Um, do you have any other insight in terms of, like, what kind of temptation we're talking about so I can prepare myself against it? Oh, it's hard it's to really tell. Cool and great? The thing about the cards is they can give you an idea of what's to come, but they're not going to give you a play-by-play. -play. But at least now you know temptation's in your future, so you've got to be careful any time it rears its ugly head. But you all look strong, and you seem so kind. I'm sure what these cards mean is that you're here to solve the problem. The difference, to fix it. The, the difference this time, Briggs, is that we stand together. We'll go to Wickermore, we'll face these six villains, and we'll bring peace back to this land of Druskenbold. You know what, Yogi, you're right. You know, six of you would totally stop me from, you know, giving in to my temptation. I, I feel strongly about that. And <coughs> as almost as if it is fate itself, the sixth tenet is to think ahead. You've recognized where there may be a weakness, and you can fix that. You can think ahead and prepare yourself for whatever comes. We're going to be all right. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not feared. Farron, why do you look so feared? <laughs> I am feeling pretty feared, as you say. Oh, we're all feared. All of us are feared. I'll, I'll admit I'm also feared now that you've admitted it first. <laughs> I thank you for speaking in solidarity with oh, me. Solidarity. That's what we're here for. So, yeah, could you, you know, you can see beyond side. So could you, like, peek around side oh, yeah. a little bit more just to make sure, like, oh, it's a great card, actually. Temptation sure. can be a good thing from a Let certain me... point of view. I'll spend some more time with them, see if I can glean anything else. While we're on the topic of tenants, we might as well think of number seven, and that's to remain positive. All right? This is going to be all right. We're together. 
We can do whatever may come our way. There is a fate that's been woven for you. The fool, the tower, the devil. You just have to keep moving forward until you figure out what it is. But I can feel it. Whatever's pulling you towards Wickermore Hollow, it's pulling you there for a reason. It brought you here for a reason. And I think it's because all of a sudden the train <laughs> charges to a halt and the table slams up against the side of, of this room. Adela goes flying as all of you are hurled this way and that. You see glasses and bottles and shards of everything in this room just fl uh, flying uh, here and there as you hear the grinding of the wheels of the train on some tracks far beneath you. You hear Adela call out for just a second, and then nothing. Suddenly, your entire world lurches forward violently, sending the table, its cloth, and the entire deck flying into the void. And you can hear what sounds like a loud screeching of brakes upon wheels of the as the cacophony of the upturned dining car roars around you. I need you all to make a dexterity saving throw at disadvantage. Oh. Oh. But I don't want to do that. Oh, I, I don't really well. I rolled uh, double 17s. I don't care. I got a 14 and a 15. That's pretty good. And dex saving, dex you say? Dex you dex say. I say. Whoa! Yeah, I got a 19. Turns into a, I don't know. How is it even possible? 12. 14. Natural one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Anyone who's within 10 feet of me uh, gets a bonus. You get you gain a bonus to the saving throw equal to my charisma modifier with a minimum bonus of plus one. You must uh, be conscious to grant this bonus, so you get you all get uh, plus four. Ooh. If you're within ten feet of me, <clears throat> which you wow. may not be if you went to go get a drink. <laughs> Catch me, Berius. <laughs> <laughs> this is when Lethaga dies yeah. in this I one. Fine. I couldn't yeah. figure out why my dex was so high. Um, in PSR, did anybody that's... roll um, sixteen, or did anyone roll fifteen or less? Hey, you with the plus four? Is it just, I was yeah. at eight. Yeah, I've got, I got a natural one. <laughs> I got a 29. Yeah. I moonwalk and Michael Jackson my head. <laughs> yeah, 25. Oh, yeah. yeah. You take 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh. The rest of you take half. Damn. As you are rocketed That's around seven. this car. Ugh. My costume. Should I do? Should I reset Macho. my health? First? Yeah, yeah, you should. should we just, yeah, you should. should just long talk. rest. Yeah, yeah, long rest, and then take the health away. Uh, oh, well, I, oh, I made a, can make a copy first. I made a copy. I made oh a copy. shit. No. Okay. Well, it's fine. No, it's I know fine. what I was at. Okay. I know what I was at. Okay. I don't feel oh, even have. Is everyone all right? Let the guy. Where are you? I'm here. I'm here. I'm fine. I I dropped my drink. Uh, As you crash into the void that surrounds you, I'll finally. All finally comes to rest. All right, once more. Sorry, I lost. I'm trying to do music. Uh, all finally comes to rest once more. Then you hear it, the shrieking wail of what can only what you can only presume to be the whistle of the Ghost Light Express, but sounding more like a chorus of wailing souls than any sort of sound made by a normal device. When it finishes its mournful blast, a rectangle of light appears several feet from you as a rush of cool air surrounds you. The door to your car has opened, and outside is a night illuminated by the light of a crescent moon. Looking around you, you see that Philip and Adela are completely gone. There, are, there is endless black void in all directions. Overturned chairs and tables just tossed this way and that. The only path in front of you is out of the train. Have we been tricked? Where did they go? Oh, hold on. Ugh. I grabbed my chunk. <laughs> oh, sorry for the smell. I apologize. We must find a better way to secure the chunk. I mean, I've tried roping it down. I've tried staples. Ugh. I've tried glue. Oh. We'll, work, we'll work on it. All right. 
Gosh, I'm fine, everybody. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> you're, the, you're the only one who stood at the end of all that. I every... saw your dance moves. It was quite impressive. Oh, thank you. You know, I got I to bring a little bit of the barred pizzazz, but I, this is a very serious situation. The train breaks suddenly, and the entire car exploded, and our very rich and very attractive patrons are nowhere to be seen in the void. Get a hold of yourself. And Virgil's still here. <laughs> Can anyone see what's outside? Remember, they were thrown from the train car. Uh, I would, at, at Yorgrim's uh, insistence, uh, step from the train car uh, quickly, uh, assuredly, and uh, try to look around into the darkness to see if I can see anyone. You step off the platform of the Ghost Light Express and find footfall upon a forest floor as another gust of the shapeless night wind whistles past you. And in a breath, there is no train at all. You are all alone in a deep, dark wood, fragments of glimmering moonlight breaking through the gnarled canopy. Look about, and it is easy to see. There is no sign of Philip or Adela anywhere. Mm. Wait, 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 we were just on a train, and now we're, now we're here. I don't here. understand. Do I still have the, the, the glass that I was holding? Roll a dexterity saving throw to see if you could hold on to it. That was almost good. Uh, plus four. That's right. Ooh. Ten. No, uh, you don't. Uh, oh. <laughs> you drop it just in that moment. At least the glass was real. Does that happen with genuine real trains that rich folk ride? You just get... Kicked off suddenly in a spooky wood? How uh, did it collide with something? I mean, it stopped so abruptly. There's, there doesn't seem to be anything around here. I don't think so. The moment that we stepped off the train, it was gone. Surely this is just some sort of trick. I can't help but feel like we've been lured here for nefarious reasons. It definitely feels like some kind of trick. And take it from us, a couple of fellows who've been tricked before. Isn't that right, Marius? We learn from our mistakes. Exactly right. All right? And Remember just, that. Yeah, well, clearly not, because we just got tricked. <laughs> <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. Uh, it does feel a little familiar. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't... Maybe this is just how it happens. Maybe they just did... We ran out of time for any proper... Proper, uh... Uh, information sharing or, or or safety measures and we just had to get kicked off the spooky wood and maybe we're in uh, Wickermore Hollow. Well, I think we've just got to pay attention to what Lady Adela was telling us and we've got to keep moving forward. Mm. It may be a test, a way of testing our abilities, a way of seeing what we are made of. Uh, it is no accident that we woke up with no understanding of how we came here only to inherit this charge. Perhaps there's a trail or some sort of marker, and we can maybe find this Wickermore Hollow. Let us keep our eyes open. Hmm. We should stay at the ready if the beast haunts these woods. Did you say there were footprints or something? Oh, no. No? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you said prints or something. Um, I'm going to look around in these dark, dark, spooky woods. <sighs> you begin to walk and make your way through the, through the trees. Tall, giant trees that reach up towards the sky. The gnarled canopy shrouding you from the darkness of night, but in doing so, making it even darker where you walk. The sounds of the forest echo out around you and occasionally the sounds of the beasts and creatures that live within these woods, some louder, some softer. And as you move forward, you hear strange noises. Noises from creatures unlike any you've experienced before, but much deeper into the forest than where you are now. Almost as if they're keeping you at a distance, but making sure to let you know that they're there, that they're watching, that they're waiting. You walk through this forest for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Time starts to feel like it slows down as the progression of night 
doesn't seem to change. The moon hangs overhead, but it's hard to get a look at it through the, the thicket of the canopy of these trees. But it doesn't seem to be moving at all. No progression from night to day. You walk for 30 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour. Feels like you could walk forever, slowly. And then eventually, you see two large flickers of light off, off ahead of you. Soft orange glow of what can only be candlelight or lantern light. And for the first time walking through these woods with all of these unfamiliar sounds and the darkness closing in around you, you feel hope. There's someone else out here in the gloom. Do y'all see that? The uh, lanterns there in the distance, yes? Lanterns, maybe. Lights. For sure. Some kind of stagecoach, maybe to pick us up. Maybe Philip, you know, wasn't messing around and he arranged something for us. Remember, there are foes in these woods. That's right. Six of them. And people have been going missing. We should be on our guard. Mm. That's right. Steal yourselves. And maybe we can get their attention cautiously. Should I sing a jaunty tune? I see no reason why we wouldn't put on a smiling face to introduce ourselves, should they be allies. Yeah, I could use a nice little tune. Yeah, I wrote a real upbeat, jaunty tune about the terror reading we just got. <laughs> is tarot or terror? Yes. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I'm playing my banjo. <laughs> Sing me a song, you're a singer. Do me a wrong, you're a bringer of evil. The devil is never a maker. The less that you give, you're a taker. I'm realizing how threatening this is sounding. <laughs> <laughs> it goes on and on and on. It's heaven and hell. Okay, somebody stop me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. oh, okay, that's enough, that's enough from Jericho. Thank you for that. Um, I'm, but I'm trying to get their attention singing to, the, to these people. And you're moving closer. Moving closer, playing, mm. plucking my banjo. You make your way closer and, the, and the, uh, the flickering light gets larger and larger and larger until eventually you are close enough that if it weren't for the, the light piercing through the darkness and casting a shadow on the individuals behind them, you would be able to see who you're standing in front of. But honestly, even if you could, the light is just so beautiful. <gasps> you stare into the flickering of the orange glow. And I need you all to roll a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage. Mm. Uh, oh, no. Plus four if you're close to me. I'm not close. Is that on any save? I'm close. That's, that's, that's so our protection good. as long as I'm conscious. You just gotta be close to me. I love you, paladins. You said wisdom. Uh, oh, oh no. No, okay. I got double twos. <laughs> <laughs> double twos. Plus, plus four. Yeah, well, I, I mean, ha. plus. Actually, well, I actually have a shitload. That's actually crazy. With a two. I got an 11. Great. Oh. Because I got plus 9 total. That's right? amazing. Oh. I got a 14. So hopefully 11's 21. good enough. 12. Uh, I got doubles yet again. Double 14s. Nice. I we got double 10s. Wow. Weird. Uh, oh. Wisdom, you say? Uh -huh. Wisdom. Uh, that's uh, 14, 16, uh, 20. Wow. Farron and Jericho, you stare into these these lanterns hmm. and you realize that the glow is intoxicating it's charming even it's hypnotizing but it's not working on you you begin to look around the glow to see who's holding the lantern is this on a carriage is it moving on a person it seems to be quite stationary as you walk towards it however as you're in the midst of these thoughts, Briggsy, Marius, 
Jerica or Lethica and your I, I got a, a total twenty two. I rolled a ten. <laughs> Fuck yourself. I'm sorry. I, I should have been more clear. <laughs> you should have been more clear. I, I, Thank I, you I, very I think I'm much. With these guys and you are with the them. Price. But you oh, you're distracted no. by a stick you stepped on on the ground mm-hmm. and you're not paying attention to anything. Wow, else. it's such a lovely shape. Uh-oh. Is that a frog? Oh, I was a going leaf. to make that joke! <laughs> Damn it! Oh, it's just a leaf. It is a leaf. The three of you on the loser side of the table. Relax, am I right? Whiz bros. Whiz Of course, yeah. yes. I need each one of you to describe a person that you trust. Oh. I, King Victor Denethrius, mm-hmm. the person that I trust more in this entire world that I would do anything for. Yes, and what does what is, what is Sir Victor Denethrius look like? Now, he's an old man. Uh, I see staging, but he continued to age. Yeah. And uh, he, he is my brother. Not blood, but in relationship. And uh, he's graying, but he's still strong, and he looks like he is filled with purpose. And he, he, even in his, his old age, he looks like a very strong ruler. Someone that you immediately would trust. And that is how you remember him. And so it is shocking when you see him standing in front of you, holding up this lantern that's illuminating two beams of light. And he looks sickly. And he is struggling to hold the lantern up as he tries to call out to you, but he, his voice catches in his throat and he just waves you towards him as he turns and begins to make his way deeper into the forest. No, no, my, my, my king. Victor, no, please come, come back. I, I can help you. It's, it's me, it's Marius, please come back. Victor, come back, please. Marius, what are you saying? And I begin to follow. Who is he talking to? He's speaking of his king, it makes no sense. Did you see someone? Marius! And Marius, wait. Come back. Marius Come back. begins to rush, Briggsy. Uh, I might think of me mum. What does your mum look like? Uh, she's a crocodile person. <laughs> <laughs> you, she's maybe she's a bonnet. Yeah, and she's exactly. got a bonnet and she's got a moo for all, a, a, a moo moo. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. A pink yeah. little bonnet with frills. And Brings her Ulysses Crash! Like Get back <laughs> here, it's instance! <laughs> Making and you oh, you see Sunday that roast. you see that her night dress is um you see that her night dress is just as you remember it as oh. you look uh, forward and you see that she is standing there in front of you how she got here you're not sure but she looks confused as she holds up a um as she holds up a candle and she looks out around in the dark until she spots you and you see the look of Uh, excitement on her face of joy to see that you are here and she um she looks towards you and she motions for you to to follow her and she reaches down and she pulls out um an old book a book that you remember she used to sit by your bedside every night when you were just a wee uh, when you were just a wee boy and read to you these fairy tales these stories and Um. She motions for you to follow her. She turns around and she shambles into the woods. What are you doing here? Does Dad know you're out here? <laughs> you're gonna catch a cold, and I'll just like go after her. Now Breezy is gone too. Wow. So, we you, need to keep up. What Gideon. are the chances that King Victor Donathus and Briggsy's mum are here? <laughs> <laughs> That's great, wonderful news. The terror reading was a good thing. We must Tarot. find out more. Uh, <laughs> open your eyes. <laughs> Uh, I would see a young orc from my clan, the Shadestone clan, uh, called uh, Darrow, who I I was a shaman, an exalted position, but left me uh, separated from my clan. But this was a young uh, orc that had begun to show signs of a similar power of communicating with the dead that I had and would uh, start to to come out to the, the tombs with me. You are confused by what your friends are saying as Briggsy runs past 
these lights and into the woods, following behind Marius, because what you are seeing is not at all what they're describing. You see the small form of Darrow, and to the rest of your group, Darrow may seem like a, a standard um, young man because being an orc, he stands, this child stands so much taller than the rest of your humanoid companions. But you see the boy that you remember. And in one hand, or in one hand, he is holding onto a shovel that he's placed on his back. And on the other, he ho he's holding up a lantern that was clearly made by hand by him to replicate the one that you carry with you, almost imitating one of his favorite people. The smile that illuminates his face is huge as he looks towards you and motions for you to follow him into the woods before turning around and scampering off. The sound of the shovel clanking um, echoes throughout the forest as he runs off ahead of you. Darrow, you survived. No, wait. I chase after him. The three of you begin to run. You, the other three of you watch as your friends barrel into the forest. They veer off of the path and directly into the, into a thicket of woods and following the strange light, all of them calling out different names and acting in ways that none of you would have expected. The three of you do not notice the others around you as your eyes are solely locked on to this person that you trust, this person that you know. Rigsy, your mother, you can hear her voice as she calls out and tells you how much she's missed you and she can't oh. wait for you to see dad. And you just have to follow her just a bit longer. They're staying in this cute little cabin up ahead. He's been talking about you. It's going to be so great to catch up. Why have you been gone so long? You look like you haven't eaten. Uh, <laughs> it's been so long. But you can never quite get to her wait. as you continue to run ahead. You have a kettle on? I could use some tea. <laughs> Marius, you yes. follow behind Sir Victor Denathrius. And though he's old and feeble now and occasionally lets out a cough, he seems to be moving far quicker than you would expect of his old legs. Yeah. But you know that he has the heart of a lion and he would he would never show weakness if he could avoid it. And you get the feeling that as quickly as he's moving, he, it is solely to hide the weakness that's inside of him as he calls out to you and tells you how proud he is of you and that he's so happy that you found him and he can't wait to tell you about what's been happening back home and that it is a glorious reunion to be reunited with his old friend and that unfortunately he is getting old and he needs your help to please just follow him a little bit longer until you can come to a place where he can rest and he can explain to you what has been happening. I will, I will, I will, please, my king, please. I, I know it is improper, but, but Victor, please. I am your brother. Wait for me, wait. As this little orc boy runs up ahead, he giggles and laughs. And you hear him occasionally call back and tell you, I've missed you so much. Can't you see what I've made? I'm just like you now, Yorgrim. I'm just like you. When I grow up, I'm going to be just like you. Don't you worry. You can teach me everything, but while you've been gone, I've been learning all kinds of things on my own. Just follow me up ahead just a little bit further, and I'll be able to show you everything that I've done. You're going to be so proud of me, Yorgrim, so proud of me. I promised you I wasn't going to let you down. Just follow me up ahead a little bit longer. Daryl, please, I have to know, how did you survive? I can't wait to show you, Yorgrim. You're gonna be so proud of me. As he runs up ahead and darts into the thickets. The three of you watch as your friends completely disappear from sight. We have to go quickly. We have to find them. Did they all run in the same direction or? Mm -hmm. Okay. You watch them all as they're all following the same two lights that you, you okay. can see. But they didn't split. They, they did not I'm, split. I'm off. Follow, go, 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 go. We've got to go. Oh, and Run. Darrow, I've never heard of a young man so strapping or ever before. <laughs> oh, that's probably a bad sign. 
and I'll, I'll follow after you. <laughs> they say that life's a carousel, spinning fast, you gotta ride it well. The world is full of kings and queens. And I just continue like that. And I'm giving us some, some chase music as, <laughs> as we continue on. You are giving some beautiful chase music as you follow along, but these lights are moving incredibly quickly. And whatever spell these lights have put on your friends, which clearly at this point you can see they've done something to Marius, uh, Briggsy, and Yorgrim is making them move with an unnatural sw swiftness as they are just barreling through the forest. And it is hard for you to catch up, but you are able to at least keep them within sight. And then eventually, you all barrel out into an open thicket in the forest. The three of you look forward. Actually, I need the three of you to each roll a d20 for me. Sure. Oh, that's you. Oh one boy. Of these guys. I got a three. Nine. Twenty. Oh! oh. Congratulations, we don't I'm know sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. You all, the three of you get to the thicket first, and as you barrel out into it, you stumble into each other, and there's almost a bit of frustration. Why, Yorgrim, you look over, Marius, why are you here? You don't know this person. Like, get out of the way, I need to get to, uh, I need to get to Darrow. And Marius, you are unsure as to why Yorgrim is here and rushing towards this, this man, this, this brother. And Briggsy, the same thing. Are they, what, what could they possibly want with your mother as you all slam into each other? <laughs> Awful. But you know what I mean. God damn it. My friends. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they really want tea too. <laughs> you um, but you you slam up against each other for a moment um, before <laughs> Briggsy's mom is gonna go. Um, and Briggsy and Yorgrim, you are frustrated for a moment before once again these the these people have stopped and they're all just staring at you and your eyes drift from them to the lights that they carry. And then that is all the two of you see. But Marius, you watch as your two friends just stop and stare. And you don't care why they're there. It doesn't matter. You're not here for them. No. You're here for this man. You watch as his knees buckle and he falls to the ground no. and the, the light um, he almost drops the lantern that he's holding um, as he is now too frail to hold it up as you rush towards him in an attempt to lift him to his feet. He puts one arm around you and yes, you can yes. feel his the frail weight of his body. It's just as, us. Uh, it's all right. As you try to pull him up, the three of you arrive only in time to watch Marius step into the jaws of a beast you now realize the lanterns were no flames. They were enormous circular eyes of a huge shaggy wolf-like monstrosity with a mouth the third, with a mouth a third the size of its body, radiating with the same bewitching orange glow as its eyes. Marius is transfixed on this enchantment in the light and with a loud snap of the jaws, Marius is devoured and swallowed whole. <sighs> The beast lets out a snickering howl as it licks its chops with the tongue at least two feet in length as the wild eyes get more maddened. Its hunger has not been sated. I need everyone to roll for initiative. Oh! Ah! Nice. The this is a creature that's going to be in the Crooked Moon. Oh, Coming to Kickstarter, Kickstarter in October. Become a VIP at thecrookedmoon.com. The last thing my friends hear me say as I am as I am holding my king and trying to support him is to say it's, it's all right Victor no one will see I'm here for you I will make sure that you are healed snap he's like hitting him he's like yep <laughs> <laughs> his, his tongue turns into stairs oh, <laughs> yeah, he walks up <laughs> well shit yeah I mean I'm like kneel I like I kneel down like into the creature's mouth to, to get to my my friend and snap. I'm toast. God. I'm so glad it was you. You all <laughs> stare at this as this creature as oh, it as it consumes Marius whole. Um and Briggsy 
and Yorgrim, as this happens, you feel the hold that this creature has over you um, ripped from you as you shake your heads and you realize what you are staring at. Briggsy, your mother is no longer there. Yorgrim, this this child from your past is no longer there. You are staring into the eyes of a big bad wolf. The fuck? Damn. Also known That's as cool. Wolf Bro, thanks to Derek. Yeah. <laughs> it's his wolf, wolf Lord. I, I thought, oh, I thought no, it's no, it's Wolf Bro! No, I, thought it I thought it said Wolf Lord! <laughs> we do, we do. Can we do Wolf Lord? No, it's Wolf Bro. That's Wolf Bro. That's so like Wolf Lord, Lord too. Yeah. <laughs> my bees look like low. Yeah, you're, 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 you're,
They can get right in. Oh, I've rolled six every time I've rolled this yeah, dice. That's rough. Mike, you spiked my dice! Oh, are those from Gen Con? Last those are from yeah. Mikey. Oh my God! I knew this. I, I, I knew I, this I, day would come. Long <laughs> <laughs> live no, the king! <laughs> Fuck you, Spider-Man! Fuck you, Spider-Man! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <that's amazing. laughs> oh, what was this? Strength save eleven. Yeah. Damn, son. You you move towards Darrow and you watch as he uh, extends oh, no. his arms for a warm embrace and you rush towards him and you wrap your arms around him. The rest of you watch as Yorgrim, at first charging towards this wolf, ready to strike, you watch as his eyes seem to change as he is hypnotized by the light within this creature's overly large eyes and Yorgrim instead rushes straight towards it as the wolf opens its mouth and swallows Yorgrim whole. Oh, you I feel both of you on the inside of this wolf's stomach feel the charm leave you as you Sweet. are, as you feel Marius, as Yorgrim slams into you uh, as he is swallowed whole. Uh, that is, however, Yorgrim's turn. Can you believe how many times we've both been eaten by a creature? <laughs> I left that and I can't believe it's happened again. <laughs> Man! It's a lot of big stomachs and it's husk and bog. <laughs> Upbeat jazz starts playing inside the stomach. Oh, I'm sure Briggs will be here shortly to cut the stomach open and pull us out. <clears throat> Mom, is that you? Oh. Uh, and that is uh, Marius' turn. I'm called Manus now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hang tight, Yorgrim. I'm getting us out of here. Uh, what kind of actions can I take? You can you can attack the wolf from inside. Uh, I draw my sword with the absolute fury of Lathander, uh, and I make two attacks at where I approximated stomach to be, perhaps. Just okay. wildly trying to get out. Ha! Oh, well, one of them's a natural fucking 20. Oh! The other one is a 16 to hit. Uh, 16 hits. Also, okay. I, I did the math, and you have 31 twists of bread. Yes! <laughs> um, I'm, you can dread that natural 20. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> I know that I can. I'll let the first one slide, but we'll the other one's going forward stomach. probably won't. Okay, that's um, I am going to... Um, I'm gonna smite the crit though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go. Um, yeah, so the first attack will be 1d8 plus 7. I need to figure out what I'm doing here. Uh, which is gonna be an 8, because I rolled at minimum damage. Uh, and then the next attack is going to be, and uh, please pardon me, it'll be, I spend a, a spell slot to do 2d8 radiant damage, so that's gonna be 4d8 radiant damage plus the 2d8. So it'll be a total of 6d8 damage oh for my the crit. God. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow, I rolled very low. Uh, plus seven is eighteen. Plus seven is twenty-five points nice. for a crit. Yeah, a trash. That yeah. Yeah. That could be fuck, worse. I'm, I got my armor's rusty. My sword's rusty. I'm taking <laughs> the, the rust. You can only the kill wolf, twenty-five commoners with that. <laughs> the wolf. You watch as um, you see the the belly of this wolf um, throb for a moment. Um, and then you see as it's it begins to heave, uh, almost as if it is going to, uh, almost as if it's going to throw up. Can I say some um, cool ass shit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, on my crit, my sword begins to glow uh, with uh, uh, almost a blood red magic with gold flecks of, of light. And, uh, I, and I'm I, using a dread. I lay on myself. Okay. I know your grim is there, so I have to say some really cool shit. And I say. Uh, I am Samarius Renathia, the chosen son of Lathander, and the right hand, the right hand of King Victor Denathria, as I strike and do some really cool damage. You do, and you do a significant amount of damage to it, and it does look like it is going, it is about to retch, but it is able to keep both of you Damn. down. Damn. Uh, some cold-blooded shit to say to this wolf before you gutted it. <laughs> if you're going to be here for another round. Oh, uh, fuck! <laughs> if your Grim hadn't been there, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's my turn. Thank you. <clears throat> Farron, 
Um, actually, before you go, Farron, oh, no. you um, you all watch as this wolf looks like it's about to wretch up your friends. Um, it is very clear, I would say, to all of you that Marius and Yorgrim are fighting back. But then you begin to, se- to hear the sounds of harvest song. As from around the, f- the forest, the edges of this um, this thicket, you be you hear the singing of what sound like feminine voices. Oh, As from all around the glade, the oh no, harvest mm. maidens begin no. to peer out of nowhere, walking towards um, walking towards the wolf, sickles in hand, um, floral wreaths uh, <laughs> atop their heads. Um, beautiful uh, white linen dresses <laughs> adorn their body as they walk barefoot towards the middle of of this um, of this thicket no, it's cool, and okay. they begin to surround you oh no um, they are hot <laughs> <laughs> hold on let's get a, let's get a better look oh, oh yeah oh god um i choose to surrender <laughs> can they just take me back to wherever they came from yeah i'm done i'm done for it uh, um and I, they I didn't design that art Let's see. <laughs> Yo, send me a there so are hard. two on Lethica, two on Briggsy, one on Farron, one on um, whoever yeah. that cool. other person is there. What's the Jericho. 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 Oh, no one. Oh, no one. No, 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 no one attacks me. Oh, no one did. <laughs> okay, so oh. both of them are going to hit Please on you, um, on you, Lethica. None of the books um, and, and you are you immediately hear the sound of this harvest song and it enters into your mind and you feel as if your thoughts are becoming jar- jumbled and you become confused as you look around you and what was a dark forest is now a, a beautiful lush spring glade and the heart of midsummer and then back to this dark forest that surrounds you <clears throat> all the while you hear the sound of the wolf howling off in the distance and you are going to take some damages i'm just fine uh eight. 14 points of psychic damage i knew it was gonna be 14 i even had 14 i didn't touch it and i need you to make two wisdom saving throws whoa two one one for each one of the for. harvest oh. maidens yeah um fortunately i'm a cleric so i'm sure this will be fine uh i'll <laughs> well, take an 18 for one uh-huh. and an 11 the first one um you hear the song louder in your mind and you are able to shrug it off and as you do you look towards the second maiden that's walking towards you sickle in hand um a uh, a bundle of a bundle of wheat at her hip as she sings out Uh towards you her eyes that same illuminating glow is that of the wolf and you feel your mind muddled almost as if you had a strong drink yet stronger still and then you look towards the wolf and there you see someone from a memory. A memory that you thought you had buried long ago. <gasps> and as you look towards the wolf, you see the form of a family member, someone you love, standing there where they should not be able to stand. As this person reaches out their arms to you for a hug. Good. And you are charmed by the wolf, you feel compelled on your turn to move towards it. Oh, towards the wolf? Towards the wolf. As you no longer see a wolf standing there, but a Damn. figure from your past. And it'll be up to you to divulge what you see, should that ever happen. Um, then we have... Farron. Oh. Yeah, we have one on Farron. Uh, that one is going to hit, so you are going to take nine points of psychic damage oh, and oh. i need a wisdom saving throw from you please um is it against a mm, spell or medical something it is i'm gonna advantage the oh is that a theater ability, a jaunty theater ability. Oh. <laughs> would you say wisdom oh, no, no. wisdom oh. wisdom oh, no, no. uh the one on you jericho misses 20. oh gosh 
uh, that succeeds. You feel the music um, <clears throat> trying to um, trying to hypnotize you, uh, but you are able to to shrug it off as you pull moss down over your ears and muffle the sounds of their their singing. Um, both are going to hit on you, Briggsy. So oh, I need. Shield. <laughs> they both miss uh, as the singing continues but you Lethica feel yourself pulled towards the wolf uh, Baron it is your turn um, you handsome wolf so I'm going to <laughs> be gone With these VIPs, maybe. No, no. Give me that bottle. Where is it? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll crash. No more cups. No, no, no. Just straight from the. I have to work. I gotta keep working when the stream is done. Um, I am going to uh with my ears covered um look towards the wolf and say spit him out right now and i'm going to slam my um my druidic staff on the ground which has like a, a a deer's antler skull on the top of it and it will glow green as well as my own satyr antlers and i will run towards the wolf um and make a uh, primal savagery attack Ooh, that's on sick. it. Mm. She good. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Uh, 13 pulls. 21. 21 hits. Uh, his AC is 16 Ooh. for now. Okay, I'll try to remember that. No good. 16 for now? For now. So he gets weaker over time. <laughs> it's good to know. Good to know. No. Right. Human points are like spinach and Popeye. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> His tail gets bushy. No, <laughs> uh, so as I make contact with him, my my, uh, my oh, antlers will God. gouge into into him, Ooh. and it will start to spread. Sort of a. Um, Where are you attacking? Oh, uh, the wolf. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm. Mm. I don't crotch. know. I was gonna go for like the neck. I feel like you try to gore the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, would yeah. gladly pay you Tuesday for a paladin today. And he'll uh, this will take acid damage, but thematically this is like uh, he'll start to get like spores mm -hmm. embedded into his flesh or gore. Oh my god. I love that. And that is what happens as you uh, as you rear into you rush forward and using your antlers, you uh, rip into the flesh on his neck and he lets out a a loud howl Ooh. as uh, as he feels the the biting pain of your primal savagery doing how much damage? Twelve. Oh, did you do your Should light for him? Two? As a bonus action? Well, I forgot what that was. <laughs> it's, right. it's been a while. It's, it's been a yeah, while. Good, good, action, good, good actions. Good actions. actions. No, no, oh, features. Oh, features. 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 My, yeah, it's a bonus guess. action. I just, I just, I, I have Patreon. to be doing the Halo of Spores. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. I have to oh, be no, no, doing no. Uh, wild shape. But, you, but to for do that. you can use it a bonus action, right? Oh, can I? Marky yes. just played one of these subclasses in our Patreon hangout go, for go, the go go dinosaur. Oh, go that's oh right. no, that's one action. Sorry, that is too yeah. tall. Yeah. I thought it was a bonus action. Yeah. Yeah. I played Briggsy the Cutlass Scratch. Oh, I wasn't a Cutlass yet. It was pre zombie Briggsy. I actually played a thing with Four Druid named Felpip. Terrible tragedy. Anyway, and that is my turn. That's a lot of fun. That is your turn. Um, he is going to use another one of his, um, let's see, where is he at? So there are two of you inside of him. That's Briggsy right. is oh boy. fairly close. <laughs> <laughs> let's find out if he can take three. <laughs> oh. Who are the two outside of him right now? <laughs> outside next to him or outside? It's Briggsy and Farron. Briggsy and Farron are right next to him. Okay. He's going to turn. <laughs> closer, though. I mean, Farron's closer. 
Where are all these perverts coming from? <laughs> I'm not even Italian. <laughs> uh, he is going to move towards Farron, uh, and he is uh, similar to what you've done, where you have uh, rended his flesh with your horns. Uh, no. He is going to reach down and make a claw attack against you. No! 23 to hit? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed it does. Indeed. 23 doesn't hit. My max HP is 51. <laughs> uh, 13 points of piercing damage. Uh-oh. She said. Uh, and uh, is Briggsy within five feet of you? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He takes the same amount of damage. What? How much? 13. Oh, my God. Oh gosh, he just splashed damage. <laughs> oh fuck, thirteen. As like his swipe. claws rend into you, he swipes across oh, and uh, oh, and shit. rends yeah. Briggsy's flesh as well. Oh. Holy shnikes. Okay, so he's okay. well fuck. Um, that's his legendary action. It's Farron. It was Farron's turn, so I guess it's his turn. Oh, fuck! Oh, no! <laughs> we're dead. This is gonna be the shortest. Yeah, we're dead. No, we're right. No, I just gotta get the shortest out. comeback no, of all time. I'm sure okay. you're fine. Oh, bro, no. I've seen this dojo. Um, oh, looking, looking at you, Farron, uh, he is again going to attempt to make a claw attack against you. Rolling a natural one, he does oh, not make oh, the claw attack. Oh, gosh! But. He is, uh, he does have two attacks, so he is also going to go in and attempt to bite you as well. Mm. Oh man, that was a four plus 11. Does a 15 hit? It does. <laughs> it does? Yeah. Yes. There's no way that can happen. That's what I was thinking. I was like, that's you can use your reaction to scream. <laughs> 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 Fucking sucks! <laughs> ah, shit! Uh, shit! Uh, uh, God. Uh, doing uh, six, 16 points of piercing damage. <laughs> Fucking handsome wolf bro. Just, just chill out. God. Actually, it can use a reaction. Can I do that? He's cheating so big. Yeah. Can you say hello, Spores? So oh, six... you, need to, you need to have use your symbiotic entity first. Oh, uh, word. 16 yeah, yeah. piercing damage. That's why it's good to come Jesus. up like that, but... Plus <laughs> 11 psychic damage from the dead. Eldritch Glow from its mouth. Yeah, Jeez. I died. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. You can't. I'm She's unconscious. You're unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> no, you still can. Perfect. You still can. You I just feel like... <laughs> well, it, it would no, be no, no, to... You, you can pass. It would really? be to be yeah. charmed by him, well, so... Oh, she comes yeah. Out, well, the bed, I consider know. me charmed, I'm friend. considering her charmed, yeah, no. Farron, Farron gets chopped. Potato. And uh, that's its turn. Potato. Oh, potato. potato. Jericho. Wait, did she get eaten? Huh? No. No, no, no she's just swiped. bitten. Oh. Uh, can Marius and Yorgrim hear me inside? Is it yes. muffled? Like it's muffled? It's muffled, but they can yeah. hear you. Uh, you'll hear kind of these muffled twangs, and I'll go. As I get stinking cloud. <laughs> That's actually really good. That's really good. On the wolf. Uh-huh. Uh, the wolf, uh, the wolf in an attempt to make him puke up my friends. I, but how is that going to affect Briggsy and... I would like to cast it far enough back that it doesn't hit Briggsy, but if you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy. Oh, sometimes, okay. sometimes there's collateral damage. Uh, it's a constitution saving throw. I rolled a natural 20. Oh, damn. We dread that. <laughs> you can't dread that. Yeah, we dread that. We cash in six dreads. <laughs> uh, I will use my bonus action uh -huh. because uh, it's a Nikki campaign, and I'll say, uh, Oh, Farron, you didn't you didn't hear my song about the wolf. Okay, I'll start again. And I'll start uh, playing Hungry Like the Wolf again as I'll do healing word on you, uh, and I'll do a little bit of healing. 
That's it. <clears throat> there is a stinking cloud on top of it, though. Oh, you man. Get, you get six points of healing. Thank you. The bare minimum. Oops. Oops. <laughs> 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 oh, actually, hold on. I'll catch it at second level. <laughs> you get eight. Seven, seven points. Seven points. Yeah. <laughs> you get eight. Uh, <laughs> make it eight. Eight points. <laughs> eight points. Eight points. All right. I mean, she's not dying anymore. <laughs> I'll take <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> would the stinking cloud affect any of the um the maidens off to the side? I guess not. What's the radius? What's the it's radius? It's 20 feet, so if we, I don't know if we have that. Oh, oh that We're definitely all... hits these three. Well, it, if I you mean, can yeah. center it like here, it, it might clip her. I'll try to clip them too. Oh, well, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Go ahead, Brazy. It's you're... not going to hit them. What else you're saying? Too. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make him puke up, Wolf Bro puke up so my brain. So you just want to try and hit one. So the one that is there fails. Number two. two. So if they are are uh, if they're if they're capable of puking, they're just puking up their guts. It doesn't do any damage at all. No. Oh well. CC. It stuns them though. It right? stuns them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Stunned. So that one is stunned. Does, the, and... does Wolfro have an empathetic gag reflex? That's my turn. <laughs> it's my one weakness. I'm a sympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, somebody get a pencil. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, uh, and with that, uh, it is so Jericho's turn. <laughs> um, he's used all of his uh, oh, legendary funny. actions. So, Jesus. Briggsy, it is your turn. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, but, 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 uh, if it's a 20 foot radius, do I feel like I hit all three of these and not get us? With what? A 20 foot radius yeah. spell. What spell? I might get me. I'm gonna want to step over here. <laughs> she's alive. She's, she's alive. She's conscious. Oh, she's conscious. Yeah. I, I try to grab your yeah. ankle for support, and you just uh, kick me off. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, 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 it's kind of gross, <laughs> in it? Say <laughs> 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 you napping. <laughs> uh, I will step over, and then uh, I will cast. Um, I'll say, oh no, I've been tricked before, but not this time. And oh wait, do I get? Am I charmed at all? Am I good? Am I free? Oh no, thank you yeah, for was, reminding me. Min, yes. Mum, what mi big mum, what game state? What big eyes you have? You're oh, within fuck. thirty feet of the wolf. I, am. Uh, I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost come on in, Briggsy. Oh, wow. Now it's a party, <laughs> technically, just like old times. Oh, you really can fit three guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that counts within ten feet of Marius, right? What do we think? This is a nightmare. Where are you? <laughs> I'm here. It's like two diagonal. As long as half of my space is within would, ten feet of Marius, I would think like at his core. Wait, yeah. but that's not where you started. <clears throat> that's where you moved, right? Oh, oh I, started, I started definitely within ten yeah. feet. Yeah. Okay. So then you okay. you would have made that roll with okay. Marius. So I, I'm I, I'm proficient. <laughs> Bitsy would say that's where I'm a Viking. Let me check. What's a Viking? <laughs> so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Does that pass? <laughs> Dungeon Mistress? You. She's in rare form tonight. You, <laughs> I think the answer is Wolf No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you step over, uh, you step over Farron's form, and you um, stare at this creature, and then off towards the maidens, and you you ready yourself to cast uh, to cast the spell, as you hear your mother call your name. <laughs> And you immediately jerk your head back towards the wolf, but there is no wolf there. What what is Farron laying on the ground for? Why is she throwing such a tantrum? This this is not at all what you thought that it was. It's your mother, waving towards you for a warm embrace. What beautiful eyes you have! And I, like open his mouth like a. <laughs> we, we just wave at you. We're like no. no, no, no. no, no. Oh, well, not, not yet. You do use your movement to get towards him. Okay. He will use his reaction to uh, attempt to consume you because that is what he likes okay. to do. He sees Marius and I at his childhood table drinking tea with his mother. <laughs> oh, my God. 
And we're waving, but in reality, we're like, no! <laughs> Go, turn no. back, turn oh, back! Oh, we catch legs! <laughs> Um, where is it? Blah blah blah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she made neck bet breakfast. <laughs> if you know what I mean, I do. I don't. I don't know. What With I don't. what big teeth you have, because you are within five feet of the wolf, his reaction, I need you to make a strength saving throw. Goodbye. Strike, you say? Yeah. Well, what is that? Oh! oh! It is oh! plus four, right? Hold on. Well, yeah. Oh! You get plus four. You're within is 10 feet of me. Is that on every save? 12 you're within 10 feet of me. So I can use a drug. Good, He's man. just so radiant. So, I didn't use it on so the 20. Good. No, that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. So you use it on, you know, that's fine. Yeah. On my 17. 20. Okay. Turn me again if you want. No, no, that's I. Okay. The, the dice have you decided. You got thirty-seven the, of them. So. Uh, it it moves towards you. It lunges towards you, but you just see your mother rushing towards you with an open embrace, and you um, it, as your arms lock, you feel one of its teeth puncture into your arm, and it it jolts you awake huh? as you look up, and this is not your mother. <laughs> This is the wolf that you had been fighting, and you wrench yourself out of its grasp and tumble backward five feet. Um, and you oh, are um, you are not consumed by the wolf. But my turn is over. But your turn is over. Okay, that's it. Lethica. Lethica. A lot's happened. Um, I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh, am I not still already charmed? Something has happened. Oh, you are charmed. Yeah. Uh, I was charmed. Yeah, so, so no, you, fun. yeah, I, you're I, charmed. Can I save? I'll save so, now. I'll save now. No, 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 I'm no. To, you you <laughs> have to make your movement, you have to make your movement towards the wolf. You are compelled to move towards the wolf. I see when we first came into this field, uh, the wolf, and I see it consume Marius. Mm -hmm. And I then see Yorgrim, I see Farron go down, I see all of these things, and then these uh, voices singing, and suddenly I turn, and where all of this action was, I see a family member, someone who I knew from a distant oh, past, a forgotten fuck. past. Fuck. It's falling towards you. Impossible, how? How are you here? I know your face. It is me. It is me, Lethica, please. <gasps> Please, see me, see me, hear me. I race forward. I forget, I drop my chakram. I just uh, dart as quickly as I can directly to the voice, uh, uh, to, 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 to the wolf, not uh, uh, heeding any of the action or seeing anything that is around me. I immediately sprint. And to roll strength saving Run throw towards. Pause for. Oh! Pause for. <laughs> no, we're all we're all gonna be about to be forcibly ejected. You rush forward and you immediately throw yourself into the arms of this person that you loved, into that warm embrace. But it is not an embrace that meets you. It is the giant wet maw of a beast as you hurl yourself into the open mouth of this creature. And as you feel yourself sliding down its throat, you crash into Marius and Yorgrim on inside of its stomach, and you immediately come to and realize that you had been charmed by this thing. The person that you had seen wasn't there. It was all an illusion. Uh, let's go, that's your turn. Uh, Yorgrim. <clears throat> you are inside the belly of the beast, so you are going to take <sighs> five points of necrotic damage. Oh. Oh, fuck. You're in the deadlights. Damn, <laughs> shit. <That> sounds <laughs> hardcore. <clears throat> uh, I will, once again, because it dropped because I didn't hit him, uh, I'll reactivate my uh, mist form. Uh, and I will recklessly attack at the inside of this, uh, <clears throat> at the inside of this wolf's stomach. Okay. Twice, if I could, in fact. <clears throat> oh! Oh! Let's fucking go. Woo! The first one's a natural 20. You could dread it, but I'll be very sad. So, uh, <laughs> okay, you've already fired me once tonight. But See, follow, your heart. follow your heart. See, follow your heart. Follow your heart. Fine. Don't, don't, uh, don't tempt her. Don't tempt her. Oh! 
The second one's an extra 22. You'd love that. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's out there. You know? What are the odds of that? It's out there. I mean, are you... Uh, what? what? <laughs> Play me <laughs> <on>! <laughs> The Thruxima ignites with Lathandra's fury oh as I draw God. upon Mary's abilities right next to me. That <laughs> scream was one of the cutest things I've ever heard, and know. it came from you. No. So for that reason only, I will not dread them. Scientists have measured the scope of sound in the full spectrum, and there's a specific tone. Mace, no, hold Mace on. is natural twang. So, no, no, no. So, <laughs> so, only so, so here's the thing. Mace talks like this. Hey, I'm Mace. Mace screams Ranger. like this. That was me. Yeah. and play some crap. So. Uh, <laughs> I think even something happens when I crit. Brutal, I don't know. Do critical, critical yet or now? <laughs> Does it doesn't matter. Sense? I know. Sense. Yeah. Uh, something, seven. something happens when I crit, though. Something happens when I crit. I'm no, sure of it. One level shy. I'm one sure of shy. it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just go, give me look. one. Give me one second. I'm, I'm so sure sorry. Of it. I'm sure of it. I'm sure. From one barbarian to <laughs> another, I'm pretty sure it's level seven. <sighs> I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm gonna take a look. On your turn, you score a critical hit with a melee weapon or reduce a creature to zero HP. You can make one melee weapon attack as a bonus action. Oh! Great weapon master attack. Oh, oh, well, that, well that's different. That's not a barbarian thing. That's well, a, yeah, I knew it was there. I don't even know what my your damage is again. Your advantage again. Make an attack for bonus action. Oh, uh, I do need to know each individual attack. Don't total up no, the damage. No, I, I need won't. each individual attack's damage. Is this yeah. the D12? Yeah. 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 Great, great, great you're gonna yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I feel it. I feel the triple crit. So you're gonna literally one shot this guy. <sighs> Come on. No, but that was close as hell. That's crazy. That's a miss. That's one hell of a miss. But that's okay. You made yeah. up for it with double fucking. Crits. Yeah, that's huge. All right, I don't hit that one. <laughs> In my excitement, I missed him. Oh, it's ninth level. Ooh. Nice. Ooh, big money. So the first crit uh, is seventeen. Sixteen. Sixteen. Shit, it's 16. It's the first hit. Okay. The second hit. Okay, all right, all right, good money. Here we go, three. No whammies. Oh! oh! oh that's pretty good. 22. 22. You... <laughs> <laughs> you take your shovel and you slice up once. You hear the wolf howl into the darkness. And then you uh, you rear back with the next one and you slice into it, doing a significant amount of damage. The wolf, um, you, you, you feel the stomach, the wolf's stomach tighten around you as it squeezes oh. all three of you as he begins to, um, as he begins to retch. And with a four, he does not, uh, he fails his constitution Let's saving go. throw and all of you feel as his stomach uh, contracts um, over and over and over again, squeezing you as you are, as you burst forth um, from his mouth as he vomits you up all uh, over Farron. Yeah, all, all three all of us? you. All three of you oh, are wow. thrown up uh, all over Farron. Uh, yes, you're, uh, you're prone. Um, you all land on Farron. You're covered in stomach acid and bile and the bits of other animals that uh, he has eaten. <laughs> Farron actually just dies. Because your order weighs like 160 so. pounds. I feel like I'm at the sticky ball pit at McDonald's. <laughs> You all watch as it's uh, his belly. Um, his belly continues to um, con uh, constrict, and you can see that um, he is suffering significant stomach pain. Uh, your attention is drawn to this portion. It looks to be a weak portion on the wolf's body. I bet I just tunneled straight out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that is Marius' turn. Uh, I would like to attempt to stand up you and uh, you double my efforts uh, 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 as I move towards him 10 feet. I am, you know, half, less than half my movement. Uh, and I'll make two attacks. Um, you need to roll a uh, wisdom saving throw. Okay. Eh. That's surely going to pass. Uh, plus nine is 27. Ooh, yes, yeah. you... 
you look at this creature, but now that you have been inside of him, uh. you are no longer shut up. You look at Paul and you're just You've been inside of him. Now that you're trying to make a joke for the best five minutes, and I can't get it out. Yeah, it's just something about him before, but you know, now that it's over, that's just done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're unaffected. Keep going. Yeah. Roll your dice. I'll make two attacks. Uh, immune now. <sighs> That's pretty bad. The one is a 15 to hit. The other is only an eight. Oh. It's a ten. A ten. Both of those miss. Oh. I passed my turn. Uh, you <laughs> are you are covered in wolf bile. Yeah. Um, the the acidity of its stomach acid stings at your eyes as you attempt to swing towards it, um, but you are unable to find purchase on this creature. Uh, Baron, it is your turn. Okay. I need you to roll a uh, wisdom saving throw. Okay. Um, and that will be advantaged. Do I have any reactions? Oh, that did a lot of good. Oh, no. Thir no. 16. Uh, 16 hits? Oh, sorry, 16 passes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Fine, sorry, I'm like, it hits and passes. It hits me. <laughs> it doesn't hit you. No, it passes, and you are, um, you are pulling, picking yourself up off the ground, your brush, um, most recent brush with death, um, making you feel exhausted. Them all falling but on you, top of me. You them mean. all falling on top of you <laughs> also, um, almost uh, debilitating you, but you are able to push yourself up off the ground and you have your faculties about you. I will get off of me, you. Oh, you lot, God. Oh. <laughs> um, I will push, push my way from the bottom of this pile. Oh, sorry. Stand up. On the tombstone. My bad. My bad. You have to stop wearing my that. My brittle bones. Um, I will it's my use entire character again. My wild shape. I, so you'll start to see um, sort of slowly like black spores will begin releasing um, from me, from my body. Um, and I will gain 24 temp. HP. Mm. Amazing. It's just severe acne. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad it's, enough. It is. It's bad enough. Ow, it hurts right here. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I man. hate those. Okay, yeah, that's enough. That really... It is the wolf's <laughs> turn. So um, he needs to make a constitution saving throw against the stinky, stinky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, who else well, does? Oh. Just him? Oh, oh as we oh, enter. Here he says, dude. I missed anyway. It was oh, fucked. Yeah. It didn't matter. Ugh. I'll make sure I remember. Uh, he rolled a five plus, uh, what did you say it was? Constitution? Yep. So nine. No, that fails. Okay. He's puking, puking and retching up. I believe his, he's stunned. His stomach is trembling as he continues to, um, to vomit all over all of you. Uh, every, every couple of seconds, you're just awash in Ugh. stomach acid and bile. Ouch. Oh, and that's his stun. That's his turn. Can oh. um, he should take? So now that I have this activated, he should take um, hail of spores damage. Ooh. Oh, he's not. He's not in the stun condition. He just is spends his turn puking until the yeah, next turn. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's stunned, so yeah. that's the end of his turn. Nice. That's huge, actually. This is turning into a Lady Gaga concert. <laughs> uh, nah, ma, ma, ma. <laughs> you should take five <laughs> points of necrotic damage. How much? Five. Five. Ooh. Oh, if it fails a con saving throw. I'm sorry. Roll a con saving throw, then you should take that. Defeat. Well, I think he fails automatically because he's, he's stunned, stunned. So okay. I will say yes, it works. Okay. Five points. Sorry. Um. I'm going to look as this wolf is puking, and as I see it kind of opening and it's retching, I'm going to look in and I'm going to- It gonna... gets its legendary actions back, but it's stunned until its next turn, I'm assuming? No, it just spends its actions. Oh. So, yeah. So after this, oh. it can after use my it. Turn, after it can use your turn, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to, I don't know if this will work, but I'll try to like look down its throat and I'll say, well, uh, Virgil, why don't you give me a big old squawk? And I was like, I'm gonna do like a power chord on my fucking, uh, what you call it? <laughs> on my uh, banjo. <laughs> no stairway. <laughs> uh, as I cast shatter, I attempt to cast shatter inside of its stomach. Uh, so you're attacking its stomach or you're attacking its throat? Its stomach. I'm trying to basically, okay. like, to pop it basically like a balloon. Yeah. Is my yeah. attempt. It's a con saving throw, another con saving throw, 16. Oh, con saving. I rolled a three. 
So seven. Well, Garsh, he's gonna take a bit of thunder damage. Not very good. Been there. Eight, <laughs> uh, 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 11, 12 points of thunder damage. You let loose the torrent of sound from your banjo, a power cord of sorts. And you are shocked by the amount of damage that this does. It does significantly more than you had expected. What you imagined to be Ooh. double what you had expected. You said 12? Uh, yeah, 12? Did I say 12? Yeah, so probably 24. 12. Wow. Yes, 12. Uh, and you, you hear the wolf howl out as uh, it is clearly in, um, it clearly has a tender tummy. Which also might be the name of one of its abilities. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. Briggsy. Okay. <laughs> Briggsy. <laughs> uh, do I perceive what these minion type folk are doing? Uh, they're attempting to charm. I will be honest and say I forgot that they were there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I <didn't> forget. <laughs> um, but they, well, they go on his turn. So thank you for reminding me of them. I'm gonna have them go now. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Can you can you change it back to the one I can oh, see? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. If we could just keep it on this one, that would That's be awesome. <laughs> um, there should be what six of one, two, three, four, yep. five, six, six yeah. of them. So each one of them is gonna roll on each of you. Um. Uh, the one on Lethica fails. Nice. The one on Farron succeeds. Um, so Farron, oh. come on, man. <laughs> what? I can't help I it. Think you might be dying now. Uh, no. Uh, you are going to take four oh, points yeah, of psychic damage, and I need a oh. wisdom saving throw. Uh, uh, the one on Jericho fails. Oh gosh, thank the you. The one on Briggsy fails. Holy shit! The one on Marys fails. Ha ha. The one on your grim fails. Uh, My rolls were four, one, five, six. Well, you said fair enough. Twenty-one. Twenty-one, and you are able to uh, you are able to stave off the charm, uh, but you do take the I think it's like four points of damage. My four points. They don't move. Uh, they don't. No, okay. they don't need to. They're ranged. They're like turrets. <laughs> My mind, the harvest is here. Briggsy. Uh. Uh, but before you go, Briggsy, he is going to use a legendary action and he is going to reach down and make a claw attack against you. Against you? Briggsy. Maybe a disadvantage. Yeah, we have Briggsy's here, so he could he could hit. Unless oh. his reach is 10 feet. No, his reach isn't 10 feet. Bring so it on. it's going to be against. Lethica's uh, in range. Five, yeah, it'll be against Lethica. Too. As in okay. disadvantage. Now, now it's going to be natural. Take her! Take her! Now it's going to be natural. Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm using a dread to re roll because I got a five. It's, okay. a, it's disadvantage against anyone who's not me. Destroy each other. My lowest was a 15. Oh. Um, Your lowest was a 15? Is, my lowest was a 15 plus 11. Damn. Oh. So the total up. isn't 15. No, no, my lowest roll is not See how that yeah. works there? Um, so it is going to hit 26. with its slashing claws. It's going to roll max damage. Uh, it's not. Oh. Uh, five. Only. I'm putting 14 down Eight again. points of oh. slashing damage to you and to your groom who is next to you. Oh. <sighs> As it swipes through like you that. and gets like both of you. Neat. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Now and that's one of its legendary actions. I will pull out the flintlock that's out that's in my sash. I will point it at it and I'll say, wait, do I need to make a save? Or am I good? Yes, you do. You need to make a wisdom saving throw, okay. please. Maintain game state. Oh yeah, you can. I'm good. It. Twenty whatever. Twenty seven. Twenty bunch. Uh, you resist will, what big eyes you have. I will cock the flintlock and Gross. I'll say, I'm not getting tricked again, and I'll pull the trigger and I will shoot a a sort of wailing like a, a ball of, of almost neon energy will shoot at him and uh, will hit him and kind of coat him in this sort of uh, neon light and I will cast Hexblade's Curse on him. Mm. And then I will walk forward and from my hand will materialize as I close my fist, the cutlass 
a gigantic sword that I wield one hand, and I will go <clears> into <throat> two attacks. Nice. Okay. Uh, I don't. Is it an 1890 or 1920? I think right now it's 1920. 1920. 1920. 1920. Oh, what a great year! 1920. Oh, dear. Damn. Okay. They might both hit, though. They might both. Look pretty good. Um. 16 is the essay. 8 plus 9 is 17, right? That's correct. Okay, both hit. Uh, so, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, not great. Um, 19, 20, 25, 20, Damn. 6, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 points of damage. I just do a quick like 31? 31. Huge. Uh, you do a significant amount amount of damage um, as you slice through the um, as you slice through parts of this wolf, um, aiming for the wolf itself. Um, and uh, it, yeah, it does a significant amount of damage. Um, and it is Lethica's turn. That's my turn. I'm gonna back up. Right here. Kill Lethica! Do I have the sense, have I deduced that looking at this beast, this creature, this monster, this aberration, whatever it happens to be, will trigger another one of these charms where I might see something that I don't want to see? I would say Incredible. yes, that's easy enough to determine Damn. that while you are looking at it, its eyes are very easily charmed you. But that you imagine if you couldn't see it, there it would be there would be nothing for it to charm you with. My eyes are clouded with tears. Having seen what I've seen in oh, such a off. brief period of time, I can feel mud and uh, the earth around me. You are no longer wearing your mask. I'm no longer wearing my mask. It's somewhere somewhere 10, 15 feet behind me. But uh, I do know that this creature has hurt me deeper than any blade could. And I'm going to crawl forward, keeping my eyes on the ground until I see feet. And then I'm going to attempt to rest up and grab this creature and cast a spell once I get within range of touch. Okay. Oh. Damn. I will scrape forward, and as soon as I That's see a, cool. a, a talon, I'm going to reach up and I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds at a third level. Let's oh. fucking go. That's so sick. On his belly. Damn you, beast. <laughs> you may be a creature of the night, but I was going oh. to hit. Uh, let's go with a... Uh, 16 is the 18. Oh, yeah. So we're at natural 18. Fucking go. Big money. Oh. Nine, 11, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. 19. Uh, that's actually only going to be twenty points of necrotic damage, but that's that's decent money. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. That's fine money. It's acceptable money. That's it's acceptable, acceptable money. money. Thank you for your D10. Oh, of course. Um, and yeah, I'm not I'm not saying anything. I'm holding back tears and just pouring uh, what you're pouring. Faith I can. You're pouring the pain that you feel inside mm -hmm. into this mm -hmm. uh, curse, into this wound that you open. Um, on this wolf, and you do not look into its eyes now, understanding how this beast, how this creature functions. Uh, and you you reach up and you rend its flesh, doing a significant amount of damage. The wolf lets out a painful howl as it continues, as its stomach continues to convulse, as it as it's dry heaving into the air. It is looking very wounded. Um, it is going to lash out, however. Um, and it is who is directly in front of it? Levick is on the ground, prone. <laughs> it's in front of it. Either yeah, either me or her or somebody. Yeah, or fair I, I, I would have um, done. Yeah, yeah. Said, it's yeah. it's going to reach down towards Lethica and attempt to make a claw attack. Oh. It's advantage because it's she's a prone. natural so, twenty. Uh, well, what you yeah. said it was a disadvantage. No, 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 no. no. I'm just saying it's a normal. It's just normal. So yeah. you're fine. Yeah. It's a natural twenty. Yeah. Well, Damn. you know, it wouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> Game of Lethica. Yep. If I didn't get crit on. Derek, you're just very critical, apparently. Yeah. I know. Everyone just likes to think well, of Well, to be hot fair, I didn't re I didn't roll that well. Thirteen points of damage to both ground. you and Farron. Is it, oh. is it oh, slashing no. damage? How much damage? 
13. What, what type of damage? Slashing. Uh, slashing damage. They're resistant. They are resistant. We are. Oh, so I'll just take Mace, six. Mace, remember I wrote it all down. I wrote it oh, all down. Look at this. I'm so proud yeah. of you. Ancestral Guardian. I will say when I was eating that, I, I forgot that uh, I had advantage on strength. You round up, right? So I did forget that. I did forget that. It's okay. It's okay. 80% is still good. Uh, and your gum is your turn. Ugh. Thanks, your Animals. girl. Gotta stand up. I'll get you. All right, yeah. Stand me up, Marius. I help help me up. up. I do. I reach out. We do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the forearms. Yeah, <laughs> Dylan. Ugh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've been working behind a desk. <laughs> <gasps> oh, 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 17, 16. Okay, okay. So first one hits. First one hits. Kind of normal. Kind of normal. Kind of nice. That's yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, this yeah, one hits cool. too. This cool. is uh, yeah, twenty something. Yeah. Ugh. 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 Five plus seven. Uh, first hit is twelve damage. Okay. And second. Do it, Jorgen. 13. 25 total. Wait, the second hit is what? 13. 13, thank you. Uh, you... You climb to your feet and you once again grab your shovel and you slice into this thing. Um, blood uh, flies everywhere uh, as it coats you and your friends. Uh, uh, the wolf stumbles a bit, but it continues to blink its large um, glowing eyes as its gnashing maw is frothing with rage as it looks around at all of you. Uh, it looks very, very wounded, but it is hungry and determined. Um, it is going to... Can you, can you just put it back? Uh, it is going to look over pixels. towards you, <laughs> and it is going you, to use you, its last oh. legendary action. It's going to make a claw attack against you. Oh, I think you're advantaged on this one. It, it, yes, reckless attack. Uh, because we were barbarous. Well, yeah, and because I don't think the I don't think the answer. Twenty three. Correct. Twenty three to hit. Yeah. Let me just check really quick. Yeah, that that hits. Hit. That that hit. Hit. <laughs> it's going to do eleven points of damage to both you and Marius. Oh, she's Louise. Uh, I cool will. Uh, I will react with. I love it. My mist. I love it a lot. Yeah. Oh. To uh, reduce the damage to Marius. <gasps> oh. Oh, nice. We'll see. <gasps> yeah. Hold up. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. By four points. Yes. So as the claws come down right before they land on me, I extend the mists out to uh, uh, Marius, and you'll see these kind of like ghouls and, and ancestral spirits swirling within it, uh, and they'll attempt to take uh, a portion they'll, of the... They'll dampen the uh, the claw attack. <laughs> yeah, and the claw attack will pass through them before it lands on uh, Marius. Yeah. And that happens. And now it is Marius' turn. Um, do I have access to everything that I can do? Every, I don't see why you wouldn't. <laughs> well, because, you know, some of it's like from Edge of Midnight. That's, yeah. Can Marius beat okay. Boss? It's late, so yeah. This is an Edge right. of Midnight one shot. Uh, yeah. I have been wounded by this creature. Uh, it's, things are going rough. I got eaten. I'm, I'm upset. Um, and, uh,. There's blood. There's a smell of blood is in the air, and uh, you can see Marius's neck tighten, and, and and the veins in his neck begin to, to kind of bulge and grow, and and the fangs in his mouth uh, begin to lengthen as he he looks to this creature, and and he feels a hunger well up within him, and uh, almost without being able to to think about it, right, the, the the urge overcomes him, and and he looks at this creature, and and he almost you can almost hear him mutter, a, "I'm sorry." as uh, I begin to feast on the creature. Oh, uh, no. And I will be using my uh, my dark gift uh, and, and use Crimson Feast. Oh. Uh, as an action, I can bite one creature within five feet of you, and my target must make a constitution saving throw. Uh, it's going to be DC 15. And on a failed uh, save, you'll take 6d6 necrotic damage, and the life essence is drained, and half as much on a pass. And it was what kind of constitution? Uh, yeah, 15 constitution. 14. <gasps> uh, uh, I, I sink my fangs deep into the neck of this creature and drink deeply. Uh, 
Uh, that's going to be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, uh, plus eight is uh, 23. Uh, plus another nine is 32. 32 points of necrotic damage as I uh, heal that much. I would ask you how you want to do this. I think you've already explained well enough. You watch as, just as Adela had said, temptation overcomes you. Your thirst, your thirst for blood overwhelms you as the scent of iron is thick in the woods this night. You let down your guard and bear your fangs as you become the creature in the night. And with one quick monstrous motion, you find yourselves attached, you find yourself attached to the throbbing vein in the neck of this beast as you drink it dry. You watch as all of you watch in horror as Marius rips the vein from its neck and begins to consume and gulp down um, pint after pint of blood until you see the wolf go weak and limp in his arms, but Marius does not stop (gasps) until there is not a single drop left in its monstrous body. And where there had been this gigantic wolf, one that had tricked you and charmed you and lured you into the forest, there is now nothing but the frail, lifeless carcass (sighs) of a completely empty monster. Marius, what have you done? I've, I've, I've made a mistake. I've let my baser instincts take over. And you killed that wolf, great job. Yeah, you should maybe do that more often. No, 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 I've I've lost control, no. You you saved us, Nim, well done. I, I, I need a moment. Virgil's so proud of you, he wanted me to tell you. No, <laughs> oh, we, we execute all of <laughs> No, I just, I just run around and like, um, you, I'm I assume with that. You, you notice. Blood sports and fountains in the night. You are all distracted by Marius and his willingness to give in to temptation in this moment of weakness. You are distracted by the blood that coats his mouth and his armor, that you don't notice the maidens that have disappeared from this thicket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But you do notice the change in Marius. Where had been his red eyes, the eyes of the Dampier, are now illuminated with a soft orange glow as they get larger and larger and larger. Oh, oh, no. Similar to the eyes of the wolf that he had just drained dry. Marius, you look out around you and you can see through the dark thicket of these woods. There is so much more light here than there had been before. You can see for what feels, feels like miles away. And then you look up with your new sight the sight of this ravenous beast of the wood, you peer through the forest itself, the bark, branch, and leaf, and you see the sky of Druskenwald bound in its eternal night, and the horror is what you see in that sky. You look up and you see the moon. It is indeed a crescent, but unfathomably massive and gnarled and with the face of a leering witch, with wild eyes filled with madness and malevolence, a bent nose and a huge twisted grin. You stare up at the crooked moon, and the crooked moon stares back. I need you to roll a d20. Oh, yeah. All right, okay. All right. Nobody panic. I'm sorry, a d12. Nobody panic. We're good. Three. You watch as Marius stares up towards the sky, and you all look as well, but <gasps> you can see nothing through the gnarled branches that have created a canopy over you. Though you know that the moon must be up there somewhere, Marius clearly sees something that you don't. And then you see as his eyes begin to change again and return to that soft red that you know all too well. But you too begin to change, Marius. 
as you become overwhelmed with spiteful envy. You wish to discard your current items and covet what your party members have. Uh, I will have already dropped the sword and the shield that I know when I have attacked this wolf, and I'm covered in blood, and I, I'm, I'm raving about this moon that I can see that no one else can see, and then my eyes return to normal, and I, I, I catch myself for a moment, and I, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I don't understand. Marius, are you feeling all right? Yes, and I noticed uh, the chakram that might be by your. Help, you. help me find my mask. I would be honored. Uh, and I will walk over to Lethica and offer up my hand to help her up. Let's go find it. It must be around here somewhere. I was taken away from myself by the eyes of that beast. I, I will attempt to comfort her, but uh, as we're looking for the mask, I will almost hope to find it first so that I can take it and steal it from her without her knowing. Okay. I will say roll an investigation check. And I'm helping. And at advantage because Lethica is helping. Oh That's a double 16s. Ooh. That's pretty what? good. Double investigation. Yeah. Uh, plus zero though, so just 16. I would, uh, a 16, especially even though your eyes have already begun to return to normal, you still have that preternatural uh, dark vision and it is easy for you to locate the the chakrams they shine in the few bits of moonlight that are piercing through the canopy and you catch the glint of the metal uh in the soft grass and you're able to rush towards them and the mask that he's looking for uh the mask is not far off from it they were both dropped in a similar um, position i will point out the chakram and uh motion for lethica oh. to, to go find them and while she's busy doing that, I will pocket the mask. <gasps> oh, fuck. Do you see anything? Anything at all? Any sign? Do you think perhaps those those strange women, the visitors, do you think that they perhaps have, have my mask? It is very important to me that I keep that. Even with my a natural vision. I was able to spot the glinting metal easily, but nothing of the mask. It's it's very possible that those women, whatever they were up to, were also here to take our belongings. What, were they all just figments of our imagination? Why do you all step inside that wolf mouth? I mm. feel like it. But there must have been something really inviting in there, like a nice, pleasant hot to, hot spring or something. A oh, pleasant hot cup of tea is what it was. Uh, also, me mum. What? Did you fellas see something similar? I saw my king. I saw someone from my past as well. Oh my god. Wolf entranced us. Drew us in. <clears throat> it was enticing. Gosh. Even the wolf knew that I didn't have no loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> Surely there were very dark magics at play, and whatever those women were up to was certainly no good. If anyone has your mask, it must be them. Gosh, and no wonder folks are going missing here. And that's, they, probably, they probably have the mask if, 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 if uh, folks are getting missing. And it almost killed all of us, and there's six of us, and that's just one big bad wolf. Imagine just normal townsfolk. It'd be a buffet. So we thinking that those people that came out to try to kill us, they were from the town that we're supposed to go to? They must have come from somewhere. I can't just be out here in the middle of the woods. Suddenly, you hear a voice in the darkness, a song drifting on the winds, the words of a song exulting harvest time in the union of sister and sister, hand in hand, in a ring surrounding you on a small, in a ring surround you on a small yet beautiful voice. It clearly is the singing of a little girl. And as you all turn to look towards the very center of this, <laughs> as you all turn to look towards the very center of this clearing, you see a small girl, clearly ghostly, transparent, and very similar in, in look to the women that had been standing around you during your fight with the wolf, wearing the same white linen dress, a halo of flowers adorning her her pale yellow hair, um, 
plated on either side of her of her face as she looks towards you with sad yet comforting eyes and she sings out this little song she reaches out her hands asking for an embrace reminds you very much of the wolf and the imagery of what he of what he had uh, had shown you these loved ones that led you into his arms and into his maw. And as you look closer at her and think back towards this, what now I would say become clear to you, specters that he had conjured in his battle with you, it becomes clear to you that this little girl fell to a similar fate. <gasps> Your mind goes back to the train, to Adela and Philip, and what Philip had said to you about a beast in the woods and children gone missing, a blight on the crops, a plague on Wickermore Hollow. Now as you stand here and you look at this poor girl looking only for the warmth of an embrace, you realize that maybe Adela was right. Maybe you were sent here to, to do good and to help this place. Maybe this is your grand adventure. She does not stop staring at you as she holds her arms out, hoping for nothing more than a simple hug. Does everyone else see a little girl? Yes. We do. I, don't, I won't hesitate. I'll walk forward and start to approach the girl to I don't attempt think that's to comfort her. Girl. Come, little one, little one, please. Is, is everything okay? She looks towards you and she has a scared yet soft smile on her face, but she says no words and you can see through her. You can see the, uh, you can see the grass at her feet, the trees behind her. And as you reach out and to touch her, you'll, you can feel that she's there, but she feels like at any moment she could be blown away by the wind. Mm. Her arms are still held outstretched as if she wants nothing more than that. Don't be afraid. Stay here with me, little one. Everything is going to be all right. And I'll crouch down and sort of get almost into like a squatting position and just really extend my hand and be like, I'm trying to keep, not to keep a distance, but I'm trying to let her feel like she could come towards me if she wanted to. And I'm not trying to like be separate or, 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 or anything like that. It's just, I'm not gonna immediately dive mm -hmm. on her. I'm also just gonna give her some space and let her take the next step. She sees what you're doing and she reaches out a hand to grab yours and feels cold. And your, your fingers are able to interlock with hers, but it also feels almost as if they're sinking in to her fingers, that there, there are clearly fingers there, but they could so easily disappear. And as you hold on to her hand, she moves closer to you and presses herself up against you and she wraps her arms around you and holds you tight. It's going to be okay. Everything is going to be all right. I, do I feel? You go in to hold her? Yeah. You, um, you wrap your arms around her and for a moment you feel the form of this little girl in your arms. And then you hear a small voice. Thank you. If you make it to Wickmore Hollow, tell my mom that I love her and I'm sorry. And then just as quickly, you feel nothing at all as a burst of wind blows through the thicket and where this girl had been standing. There is no one and nothing but the six of you. There's nothing to be sorry for, little one. I'll be keeping my eyes down because I like I would view Lethica's face as like seeing a woman indecent because like I know that's a deal. So with the mask, like I will not make eye contact. I will not look at it. And I'll say, uh, so 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 what was was that little girl led up by that there beastie? That is what my gut tells me. Yes. Well. Maybe that terror reading was talking about this sort of thing. That's what our fate is, is there's a lot of transformation and bad stuff and we just gotta kill a whole lot of wolves and 
monsters. Well, this wasn't just any wolf. Maybe this was the first of six villains. We've already begun to do good works. Only five more? That is... That is, must be right. We have defeated a big bad wolf. Perhaps there are only five more like it to worry about. A gust of wind circles through the thicket once more. And Lethica, roll a perception check for me, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why am I rolling like such garbage? I'll just take an 11. So That's good that enough. Oh. It was only 10 that you needed. Oh. oh. Um, Damn. You, the gust of wind blows through. And once again, this feels more akin to something intentional than natural. And for a moment, you feel like you hear singing. And then you hear the little girl's voice yet again. Follow the song, harvest time, harvest time, harvest time. As it fades off into the distance. And as the wind finishes whipping through this, this outcropping, you turn your face, you, you, you turn and look towards where you had heard the voice, and you see a small trail leading off into the woods that you don't remember seeing before. And as you listen, you hear the faint sounds of harvest singing. Does anyone else hear those voices on the air? Yes. Oh God, unlikely Saturdays, first ghost kids and creepy, Women with, you know, trying to lure us away, and now we're here singing. Oh, no, 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 no. I intend to follow the path. As do I. I want to find my mask, find out who these people really are, and where the real threat lies. Could also be Wickermore. Could take us to the hollow that we seek. That's just why we're here, the little ghost kid, and the, and the songs, and the, the she was singing. That's truly it. And we, maybe they'll have your mask, Miss Lethica. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I'll take out a black handkerchief or a piece of fabric, something like that. I'll let my hair down, and then I'll pull that over and secure it using what I would normally secure my hair with. Cool. Just long hair, white and my veiled face. Does this help, Jericho? Oh, well, well, now I can look you in the, well, not the eye, I mean, it's from the figurative, I can look at your face. Anyway, you, it's fetching, it's a, it's a good new look, and I'm sure we'll find your mask someplace. It's, it's fine. I have always been able to see well in the dark. Shall we go? Yes. We sure we can't get back on a train? I look behind me. Sure, that opportunity is long past. All right, lead the way. All right. All right. I'll have my flip mark. I'm looking for any glowing eyes in the woods. Okay. But I'll, I'll follow Marius. You continue to move in the direction of the singing the exultations of nature and the harvest beckoning you almost personally to its rapture. You feel almost pulled out of the gnarled wood as you emerge from the tree line, leaving the darkness as a distant bad memory or faded nightmare in an instant. Instead, you feel warmth of body and soul as the shadows dance, cast by the thrashing flames of torches, braziers, and bonfires. Among the dancing flame are dozens of dancing humans in ritualistic garb, most wearing masks of animal, plant, and things older than this place. The way they move is passionate, vivacious, and with every fiber of their being. And as the clouds move away from the crooked moon, the terrible light casts an enormous shadow over all, and you finally realize what these revelers have been circling in their round. Towering above you, at least 50 feet tall, is an enormous humanoid effigy, a colossus of woven wood looming so large it seems if it's as if its head might crest the bottom of the bewitching crescent moon above. 
Beneath its unmoving vi vigil, a woman approaches you from the throng of celebrants. She wears white and carries a sickle, waving to you with a beaming, freckled smile filled with unbound enthusiasm. She stops before you as the singing in unison reaches its climactic conclusion. And suddenly, there was no more singing. All masked faces looked to you. The young woman looks familiar, as if she could be related to the lost child in the woods. As if she was the lost child in the woods, now impossibly grown. There is nothing but joy in her eyes as she speaks. You came. You made it. You're on time for your appointment with the Wicker Man. And that's where we'll end the session. <laughs> no, I refuse. <laughs> you, are, you are denied. You are denied. We are playing for another six hours. You just kiss the Rolito. Holy oh shit. Oh my god. Your appointment oh. with the Wicker Man. <laughs> the who? Well the done, Nikki. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We well played the Crooked Man. I don't know if you can tell, but we are really into folk horror here. Uh, and we realized that there was a uh, massive gap as far as uh, of TTRPG content in the realms of folk horror. And we decided, why don't we fucking fix that and not sleep for the next year? Uh, it is a fifth edition module. It is going to feature a campaign setting themed in folk horror of Druskenvald, but it is not entirely the Druskenvald that you remember. It is going to also feature an entire uh, campaign uh, from levels one to 13. And uh, what about some player options? We have 13 subclasses. 13 yep. will be a running uh, a running tab here. Um, and we have, we got feats, we got spells. We probably got some backgrounds in there. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Ages, mm -hmm. artifacts. It's gonna, it's a lot. Yeah, it's it's gonna be thick. Yeah. Um. In in the adventure, we are uh, coining something that we are calling the fate weaving system. And one of the things that we do here at Legends of Avantress is when we have these grand sweeping story arcs, we like to weave in the character backstory so it doesn't feel like an afterthought. So we are uh, working on a system to give uh, players and DMs all of the tools that they need um, in order to. Uh, very easily tie in all of the party's backstory into the grand narrative in a variety of different ways that will hopefully feel very custom to your party members. 130 twists of dread. I wrote right. down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike told me there'd be a quiz. Yeah, so yeah. I, actually, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. And I don't know if we mentioned, but a full tarot deck. You saw that oh, play yeah. through 78 in the thing. cards. 78 yeah. cards, original art. Absolutely fantastic. And there's some tarot uh, cards on the screen right now. An important oh, yeah. thing to note about the tarot deck for those of you that do read tarot like I do. Um, if this is a Rider Waite Smith tarot deck, um, the we are keeping um, the symbology of the tarot um, so that way you can use it in your games. But you could also, if you just want to use it as your tarot deck, you will be able to do both. Um, so yeah. it is, uh, we've been working very hard to make sure that it is up to standards for those that mm. uh, are tarot enjoyers. We aren't fucking around, folks. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are partnering with the Blasting Company to create uh, bespoke custom original music. Uh, the, the amazing composers of the Over the Garden Wall soundtrack uh, creating thematic music to uh, be played with the campaign. Becoming a VIP God, is the yeah, best possible God. way that you Please. can get ready and support us. Basically, the more VIPs that we know helps us better play. It's mm -hmm. also worth mentioning there is a uh, there is a private VIP uh, Discord server. That's right. For VIPs, there is a Crooked Moon Discord yep. server that you can only get to oh, by becoming a VIP. Cool. Uh, you're all going to have first stab at, at seeing previews of art and, and extras before anybody else. Uh, you'll get access to our uh, campaign page first. Um, so there's a lot of benefits and perks to becoming a VIP. Yeah, we love monsters. Folkloric monsters. Mace! Yes. Look at you, you well, did, you did, wow. you did your homework. Some of us have been to thecrookedmoon.com. So oh, very well done. <laughs> And so uh, we, the, the huge thing about folk and folk horror and folklore is that there's all sorts of secrets and rituals and superstitions about creatures that oftentimes they are not handled with a straight fight, or if they are, you need to do things to weaken them or trick them. And so for all of the monsters in the Crooked Moon, uh, of which we are at 65 uh, at least, 
Um, you, we will be having special secret superstitions folklore to uh, either deal with those creatures without combat or make your party better equipped. And if you don't, if you just try to go in and dive into it without learning the folklore and the local myth and the local legend, you may have a deadly time. These aren't big bags of hit points that you just knock down. Mm -hmm. Did we, we talk about the boss maze? Oh! Oh! Uh, thank you, Maze! Along those same thank lines! Thank How you. many, Maze? At least 13, Richie! No, 11. 11. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Damn it! You're fired. You no, said the sorry. thing about 13, well, I was just so into it. For every single one of our super epic multi-phase boss fights, we are having a miniature produced. And uh, so hopefully you can terrify your players in these megaton boss fights. The, the fable really artifacts are honestly really so the, cool. the module itself? They level itself. up with you. Artifacts of anathema, powerful uh, magical items that basically level up with you, and they unlock different abilities for each tier of play. I was just going to say that my favorite thing is that I can't talk about my favorite thing. <laughs> there's still more things that yes. we are going to do. We've already been super secretive, but there's still more things oh that I'm excited to talk about so much. that I can't because... We, we're going to make sure that it hits that of Antra standard, you know? Thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited to share the Crooked Moon with uh, with you. And uh, when we launch on Kickstarter in October of this year. Um, that's all I got. It's going to be fucking good.